What is going on, everybody? It is episode 574 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here once again with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. We are going to see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire tonight, and I'm going to struggle to stay awake. Not going to lie. <laughs> Are you excited I'm, for it? I, okay, so no, not really. Okay, so I loved Afterlife. I thought McKenna Grace was fantastic in Ghostbusters Afterlife, which was, for the most part, a love letter to the original series and, of course, to star Harold Ramis. It didn't need to be made into another one to keep the sequel, you know, to keep the sequels coming. I think they should have just ended it at Ghostbusters Afterlife. But where there is money to be made, Hollywood will then uh, attempt to do so. Yes. And they're not going, it's, the box office isn't looking good, so perhaps they will learn their lesson this time. The reviews aren't looking no. good, but anyway, Phil is back. Hi, everybody. My name is Phil Abonte. I'm the lead singer of the heavy metal band, All That Remains. How you doing? And he's back from out of town. From out of town, from, yeah. the, uh, from the venomous Viper's Den of Los Angeles, California, out there for a couple of weeks writing and uh, tracking drums. Got most of it done. We shot a video. It was sick. Uh, it's going to look great. Can Took you give some... us a sneak? What's the video about? How's the, what's the theme? Just the performance. Video? We got two. We actually have three new faces in the band since okay. the last time we made a video. Our, our guitar player, Ollie Herbert, yeah. passed away in 2018. So we have Jason Richardson now. We have a new drummer who has yet to be announced, so I'm not going to talk about that here but uh we also have uh, the return of an old our old 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 basis from like back in the day matt uh dice he uh he grew up with us in western mass and he went off to play with cky and then decided that was a terrible idea <laughs> and uh he's back so. awesome so, why is that uh drugs got it yeah drugs and partying like all the partying that you saw like jackass do I literally saw CKY cameo on Viva La Bam. Yeah, exactly. Imagine that Last happening, night. but not getting paid for it. Uh, <laughs> that was basically met what Matt was doing. The, uh, so the sad thing is I look at Bam and I'm just like, dude, I think he's getting on. He's doing better now, like at least in the last couple of months. I saw, right? him on a, I saw a, a clip of him on a skateboard, yeah, like doing skating tricks. So look, man, if you're... Wow, he can still move. Yeah, yes. I mean, com considering there was a time like two years ago where people were like, he's going to die yeah. like in the next six months. Like, I don't know if he's just like managed to turn it down or whatever, but good on him for, you know, making it and I not think dying. That he was, he, has, he was in the middle of kind of a, a rough custody dispute with his yeah. uh, ex and his child, which I think might have kind of influenced him trying to clean up his act. But I do love to see celebrities get it together. In fact, we were talking off air um, about the comedian Sean Weiss. He was a child actor. He played Goldberg in The, in the Mighty Ducks. And he, uh, he's been making some very uncouth jokes about the Drake Bell situation because he himself was a child actor. They're good um, jokes. So I guess if you're a former child star, you're also allowed to yeah. joke about it. Allowed to make those jokes. So the people in the comment sections don't seem to think he should be making them. Well, but comment sections literally are the place where the angry people are. Yes, go, so. exactly. So and he's uh, the, he doesn't answer to them. He answers to the people who go see him at the comedy clubs. So. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's a perfect case, to your point, where he got really addicted to meth. Mm. And like there's this really famous mug shot of him just looking absolutely destroyed. And he got his life back on track got his face That's all good. fixed up yeah. and looks he's like it looks like a million bucks now but him. like he's uh he focuses on his sobriety it's a big part of his care you know like who he who he is online uh so you like to see people get stuff back together uh get their life back together it's a good thing uh we got a bunch of stuff to get into today guys but before we do that would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already please and thank you share the video with your friends i give you permission to yell in the chat I, I was typing all caps in the chat before I said, you are allowed to yell. Do we have an yeah. angry chat today? Uh, I mean, you don't even have to. You, just because you're yelling doesn't mean you're angry. You could just be enthusiastic. Perhaps Who's you're just in, in a good mood. Today? Let's see. So, you know, you guys are you're allowed to yell chat? in the chat. Uh, remember, all Super Chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those right then and there. And then we will Tag do our best there. to get back on topic. Perhaps you want to yell in the Super Chat. You can do that as well. We will not shame you for doing so. I mean, maybe we'll shame you. I will not. Shame. Uh, it, Phil might. Perfect. <laughs> uh, what are we going to talk about today? So, okay. Elliot Page is back in the news because there was some clips from an interview that were going viral we're the other day. It. Elliot Page is looking yeah. rough. Guess why like they were going viral. It's not because Elliot Page said anything interesting. Elliot Page just isn't looking yeah. the best these days. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're also going to talk about a little bit of the fallout from the Quiet On Set documentary. In this case, it's that Drake Bell has had to respond on behalf of Josh Peck, 
who did initially uh, not comment on all of the things that were happening. And then people on the internet got up in arms and said, you don't have a right to not have an opinion. Silence is violence. How dare you not speak out? Uh, and Drake Bell basically had to say, look, you reached out to me in private. Leave the dude alone. The internet- There's been a lot of drama. Yes, there is. So we're going to get into well, that. Well, you know, when the topic is child rape, that's dramatic. Yeah. I mean, I understand why people take it seriously. I'm glad that some people still do these days. Uh, when I see people, like, the problem is, is, like, when you get focused like that, then everybody becomes a target because the internet makes it really easy to just try and... Because people were going after all the people who wrote letters, fine. You want to you wanna go after those people on the internet and shame them, whatever. But now you're going after someone that was on the show with him and in all of this stuff. It's like they don't know where to end the line for these mm. things. And it becomes less about the actual crimes and more about just dogpiling on people. Because justice isn't attainable. Exactly. Justice That's what it is. So we're gonna talk about that. Also, Beyonce is upset because she feels that back in 2016, she was not welcomed at the Country Music Awards. And that's the whole impetus behind the cover of her new album. Had she written a country song in 2016? No. Okay, the claim Okay, is well, that, there you go. No, no, no. I mean, the claim is that her song Daddy Lessons was her first country song. It's not a country song, but that's the claim. Neither are the new songs. Yeah, the say, new songs aren't either. She literally Beyonce, says that. Shut the hell up. She says uh, That's she why was, she was invited. It's cuz they thought like, oh, this Beyoncé song like kind of vaguely sort of sounds country-ish. So we're going to talk about that as well. We got a bunch of other stuff to get into. So You mean we're going to dunk on Beyoncé? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, so if you guys are ready, we'll just get right into it. Mary, are you ready? I'm still crying out of my left eye, but... <laughs> this is the funniest thing that's I'm happened ready. today. I'm ready, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> She's sad, guys. I'm going to keep Billy, crying. I am. I'm ready. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. First things first, if you didn't, uh, if, if you were thinking of projects that you might not know were getting made that you might want to have get made, I don't know if this one is for you. There is a live action The Sims movie in the works, and it's being produced by Margot Robbie. But she's not going to be in it. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's like I want to hear Margot Robbie speak. What is it? Simlish. Is that the what language? is the language they speak? Is that the language? What? They have their own language in the game. You I know? never played Sims, so I have no idea. It's just gobbledygook that kind of sounds vaguely like English if you didn't speak okay. English, but I mean Margot Robbie. I, like I said, I think they should skip this and make the live action Pac Man. And get Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively to play Mr. and Miss Pac-Man. And then, then they'll do the Pac-Man sex scene. Just do that. I don't want the Pac-Man sex that. scene. That was just a joke. I, Hollywood's going to do it. But Pac-Man is going to cheat on Mrs. Pac-Man yes. with the green M&M because she wears those go-go boots. I hate all of this. Yeah. Why are we talking about this? Uh, okay, but the Sims movie. I'm wondering if they're going to include the Sims that get abortions. Or yeah, it, it, or it could be like a surrealist type feel to it, like a Pleasantville, or a, a Tru- horror movie, yeah, or a Truman Show type theme to a movie. Yeah, that it, it, everyone thinks that the world is a simulation these days. So is that the okay? So I, I have a question for you. I don't know if I've ever actually asked you this one because this is one that people talk about all the time. Do you believe that the concept of human beings that now believing that simula- like that we live in a simulation is like a substitute for for God for people that it's all that it can be. Yes, it's, all it's it literally all that it can yeah. be. Think that that's what it is. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I see so much these days of when I'm watching movies and TV show of people who have unique beliefs that aren't religious, but then they scoff at the idea of religion. They're they're honestly okay. So I have thoughts mm-hmm. about this. Go. I don't think that people have. I don't think that human beings have the option of whether they have religion or not when it comes to at a society level. Every society has some form of religion. Every single human society. In human history, no matter how far separated they are in time or physically from each other, they've all created religion. Religion is not, religion is is like a language. Okay. It is far more a cultural language than it is, um, than it's actually about the spirit, at least from, from a socio, sociological side, it is more than it is from a spiritual side. So I can believe, even though I'm an agno- agnostic and don't really have a spiritual kind of connection to anything, I can still believe that religion is necessary, religion is good, we don't get an option, so we, we have to pick the best religions to encourage. And the best religions are the ones that have positive results and, you know, don't kill people for, ba- you know, for, for no reason or whatever. Um, but we don't get to opt out of religion. Yeah. And if we take the old religion away, 
it will be supplanted by something else. Now we've got this, it's like a this whole amalgamation, like an, an, uh, a Gnostic religion with, with like LGBTQ people as like the the saints and, and so it's just a weird, crazy amalgamation. But like, it's all about like worshiping the self and worshiping the, you know, it's, it's like the secular idea kind of religion, but it's definitely a religion. Yeah. I've heard the same discussion points made about police forces that there's always been some form of police force. Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because it's, 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 either, it's either an official, you know, established blah, 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 or it's just people in, in the community policing themselves, policing each other. And it tends to be that, the, you know, men will be, will be the ones that are going to do it when it comes to policing other men because a bunch of women are going to be able to police the big guy. It's going to take other guys that are fairly big to police them. And, and, and that kind of stuff, those rules and stuff have been, have been a part of human society for longer than they've, there has been human society because those same rules evolved with us. Yeah. They come from us being chimpanzees. I don't believe that religion was created with humans. I guarantee that there was pre-humans. If you believe in evolution, I'm not going to get into a fight with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, I'm just kidding. Fight, um, fight, fight. Now but, I'm going to start throwing things. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I believe that pre-humans had religion too, because yeah. I don't believe that religion is, I believe that religion is a way to communicate. Did you, did you see that video the other day of like the, the police force that lowered their standards for uh, the obstacle courses? And it, and it oh, because they're all fat. It looks like a, yeah, soon. and it looks like a four-year-old could, yeah. could like made me made me feel real good about myself. It did. It's um, kind of crazy doing it all that over. Uh, they don't need to do those tests after yeah. initially getting into the police force. There are multiple states where you don't need to pass the bar to practice law now. Yeah. Hmm. As there are who's been skating for 25 years. I say thank you to the fat cops that I was able to get away from <laughs> when I was young. Downtown, you know, you just run, you just skate away from them. There's not. What are you gonna do? Chase? What, what me? are you gonna chase me, fatso? The <laughs> donut. Like, uh, but okay. So, do you think that the the movie a movie like Sims will get bogged down in gender ideology? I bet I bet you it does. I bet you it gets bogged down. And depending on who writes it, it becomes given the changes that they've made to the Sims over time. Uh, just in the gameplay, yeah, there, that's definitely a possibility. Like, you can have a trans sim. I think that's a thing. Sims now. is also overwhelmingly a female game now, right? Like, it's always play. been. Okay, I so think right, so. This is actually games perhaps, like Second Life yeah. and The Sims and stuff like that. I think they've always been female dominated. If it's done well, then this could be a good argument to what we were pointing out with Barbie, which is that they need to start making things that will actually appeal to women. So perhaps the Sims movie will appeal more to women. It's certainly not going to appeal to dudes. Yeah, I think I'm I not said going like watch a Sims movie. the the Sims women love the Sims because they like to control like simulated social situations and dynamics yeah. and relationships. That's probably and true. There's a twenty dollar like one. It's like playing with a dollhouse. Basically, it's the same thing. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> um, there's a twenty dollar. Yep, I don't see it here. Uh, it's from Courier Jackalope ninety one says back when college humor was funny, they made a great preview for a Sims movie. Also, hi Phil. Hi. I think they're just going back to all of those skits and just yeah. making them a reality. It's well, that's what they did with the Weird Al movie. Yeah, <laughs> they made the Weird Al movie a reality. What do you think? Do you think like was the Sleepy Town was that uh, that live action, but everybody looked like they were cartoons, right? Was it Sleepy Town? Uh, Lazy Town. Lazy Town. Lazy, Lazy Town. Town. Um, I imagine like a Sims movie like that. I guess. Lazy Town had puppets and people. I think. Oh, well, maybe not with yeah. the puppets, but the, the, <laughs> the outfits that they wore, how they were like kind of exaggerated, sure. like, and they looked like they were like trying to be cartoons. That's just what I imagine it being like. Yeah. Does that mean the, the boys will get like a roller coaster tycoon movie eventually? Oh, no. <laughs> well, Civilization Five. Yeah. That would, we'll that would end work. up with that. I'm just saying that if you're looking to appeal more towards women, this is a game that has a female demographic uh i guess they'll have to make a candy crush I, movie i watched the mario movie um the original no no the new one mm -hmm. the i was wondering you know why did it make so much money mm -hmm. it's it's really not good i guess it's just not for me ah. i guess it was just more so for for kids mm -hmm. but i just don't it, it it was kind of bizarre ended well, really abruptly well we'll have to wait and see whether a sims movie does well yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who is doing well as Tracy Morgan, who has beaten Ozempic? Is this a success story or this is, is it a, a... This is kind of a Schrodinger... Like, this is both a failure and a success. I, All, it just depends on whether you've opened the trunk or not. <laughs> Tracy uh, Morgan reveals he gained 40 pounds despite taking out. weight loss drugs. Oh, actually, okay. okay. I can out-eat Ozempic. I did not Ozempic. think that beating Ozempic meant... <laughs> 
eating enough to. No, Tass, <laughs> he's just built different. That's Task hilarious. Task failed successfully. Yes, yes. That's yes. what this is. Task failed successfully. Oprah's over here giving like uh, interviews and made for TV specials about Ozempic and Tracy Morgan's over here like, look, I can prove to you that it's not that great. It's uh, it's perfectly capable to, to out eat it if you must. Someone replied, I'm on that shit. If you overeat, you throw up. It's not a fun drug to be on. I've lost 120 pounds with it and it's changed my life. He needs to take it seriously and not act like it's a miracle drug that makes your what makes you skinny and you can eat whatever you want it's, it's not well i don't know if throwing up constantly is that great of an option it's crazy how like certain certain aspects of society endure because i still remember my very first job was working at a grocery store right like mm -hmm. I, I pushed carts to the grocery store which is why i always took such offense to the people who didn't bring the carts back oh but the mm -hmm. but the point being that i still remember back then there would be like advertisements in certain aisles for like the adkins diet and now even in the age well, that they we have food live that's in, designed for the Atkins yeah, diet. yeah like uh but like now even in <laughs> the in the day that in the time we live in where it's all about body positivity <laughs> and accepting what you look like it's almost like these two uncomfortable truths that refuse to acknowledge each other that people want to be skinny and celebrities want to be skinny and, yeah. and regular people want to be skinny and look good too. But then you have this other aspect, which seems for me, for the most part, to be promotional in nature, meaning that the companies don't promote these things because it's good for them. They do what all capitalist businesses do. They look for a way to increase market share. They find something that they think will bring them money. We could argue all day whether that's actually a successful marketing strategy. The more I go to a target, the more I think it actually does work for them because the average woman isn't looking for aspirational beauty on the pictures uh, of the women above the, the clothing lines. They're, they're looking to see themselves or something that looks like them so that they can uh, so that they can buy stuff that they think will look good on them. I, I actually disagree with that. I don't think women like representation marketing. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, I, I think that actually body positivity was created by skinny chicks so that they could um, feel superior. Basically, it's the stereotype of like the girl who tells her girlfriend to cut her hair short. And she's like, it would look so cute on you. I'm of two minds. I feel like they say that they want body positivity, but they actually don't. No, I'm saying which might these, be what I'm saying. These women are bigger <clears throat> and are buying stuff, and they're and because they are bigger, they want to see stuff that looks like them. Yeah, but they don't like seeing themselves. I'm talking about. I'm talking far more broadly than <laughs> yeah. the specific women. Look, no one enjoys being fat. Yeah, let's just be honest about that. So uh, good, good for Tracy Morgan, or I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm not reading that. <laughs> so, yeah. Whichever that, whichever that may be. All right. Uh, bad Cancel news, culture. Bad news for John Hinckley Jr. Cancel culture is killing his music career. The attempted assassin is saying that he is a victim of cancel it's, culture. It's, it's, a, it's a rough one when you've uh, been arrested and jailed for trying to shoot the president. Look at that picture of him. He yeah. looks kind of out of it. So it says uh, <laughs> you shoot one president and suddenly you can't buy a break. Uh, that's what John Hinckley Jr. is saying, essentially. And his latest folk singing gig got canned. The man who opened fire on President Ronald Reagan and also <laughs> injured Press Secretary James Brady, a Secret Service agent and a cop, has become a gu guitar-strumming folk singer who actually gets booked for concerts. Why did they find that shocking? He's got crazy hybristophiliac groupies going to all of his gigs, I'm certain. Yeah, I'm of certain of it. Well, it's like yesterday when we were talking about, I don't remember what we were talking about yesterday, but it was like, they're like, that's a whole subset of women that love serial killers and love uh, uh, criminals and stuff like that. They think they can fix them. See, people look at this story and they think, oh, that's so funny and quirky, haha. -ha. But then when Morgan Wallen tries to just have his music career after being recorded saying the N-word surreptitiously, yeah. that's literally the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of ironic that, you know, attempted murder isn't as bad as saying a no-no word. Do you think uh, All That Remains collaboration with John Hinckley Jr.? I literally want to buy one of his paintings to hang in our studio. <laughs> and I'm not kidding at all. He's, yeah. he, may, he does paintings. And okay. I actually sent a, I sent a message to our bass players like, yo, Matt, should we get one of these? He's like, absolutely. A multi-hyphenate <laughs> artist. You should, if you don't follow Matt Dice, his name is D-E-I-S, M-A-T-T-D-E-I-S, Matt Dice. He's hilarious. You should follow him. Well, it's like uh, that X. guy in the Drake Bell documentary who had the poster, who had the picture of painted by John Wayne Gacy. Yes. Self-portrait. Self-portrait. <laughs> that is mm -hmm. awesome to have. Like, I mean, obviously well, okay, it's macabre. If you, and, if and, you weren't, uh, you know, a pedophile that would be 
kind of interesting to have in your house. No, it's macabre, and it's 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 like he, those kids are dead. Like they ain't coming back. Like having like something from like someone that is is that demented and crazy, and and like that that speaks about the human condition just as much as as something beautiful. It's it's horrible and depraved, but it's like that's like. That is that is a, in my opinion that's something that that is is extremely interesting to have like having horrible art is acceptable because it makes you well, think about it the fact that it's horrible and, look, and like so it's it's disturbing though because he like had this pen pal friendship with John Wayne Gacy and that's how he you know got the portrait in the <laughs> mail a, and he turned out to also like John Wayne Gacy be a pedophile well, so all, I feel like it should have been disturbing. seen as a red flag that he was showing children this in okay his house. fair like, enough I was just mad you can't put the switch on the Glock right well, I mean, of course, I'm mad you can't put the switch on the clock, but um, <laughs> like that, that's that goes without saying. Um, but still, like when it comes to like, so like, I'm not the guy that's going to like, I'm not the guy that's going to be like, oh, you have like if you had like old Nazi paraphernalia from from World War Two, I'm not going to be like, oh, he's a bad person. He, he's got to be a Nazi. Or if you had like if you had like Jeffrey Dahmer's glasses or something like that, I wouldn't be like, oh, that guy probably likes Jeffrey. Dahmer. I had the I, like, I had the Jeffrey those kind of creepy. Those no, kind of real the real things. ones, okay. not the oh the actual yeah. like, yeah, like if someone owned if someone owned like a shrunken head i wouldn't consider that person a bad person for owning the shrunken head uh it's funny okay so it, go, it goes on here just keep listening it says last week hotel huxley posted on its instagram <laughs> you guessed it postponed until further notice they're killing us here the last line seems to be a reference to the massive backlash the venue is getting for booking hinkley but also uh but also feels distasteful considering the concert date would have marked 43 years to the day he attempted to assassinate reagan young people hate Reagan. So I think it makes sense who, that he might have a following and well, they the want to see him. Who, the, who was the backlash then? Boomers? I guess. Boomers Most who likely, are like, yeah. I love no fault divorce and the <laughs> and, and the ban on we, and the weapons ban. Like, I love Reagan. <laughs> Sir, you know who it is? It's Surge. Because nobody hates Reagan more than Surge. Surge was I'm actually. I'm not even sure why Surge, Surge hates Why Reagan. does he hate Reagan? You should ask him. He will go into detail for like 45 him. minutes. Was he even alive? No. During Reagan's presidency, that doesn't, he wasn't even alive then. He just bought it up like a bunch of accounts and just called this place repeatedly. Surge just, is just single handedly <laughs> trying to help this guy so that he can let him continue to perform. Yeah, he's the biggest John Hinckley Jr. <laughs> hater. We should just, I wonder if they're John Hinckley Jr. shirts. We should get Surge one. He has merch. <laughs> he probably does. He probably does have merch. I guarantee you he does. So, but yeah, he was found not guilty by means of insanity. Okay. Uh -huh. Insanity uh, is just shouldn't really be an excuse <laughs> when you did it. No, All right, Mary, no. what's going on with this uh, Metallica COVID insurance thing? Yeah, so Metallica has been trying to get their insurance to compensate them in $3 million of losses due to concerts that they had to cancel due to COVID-19. And they just got denied in court. And the judge actually quoted Taylor Swift in the denial. To paraphrase Taylor Swift, we were there. We remember it all too well. Why would you quote Taylor Swift in your court file? Oh, God. <sighs> and the point is, like, you buy insurance to protect yourself from that kind yeah. of stuff. The whole point of insurance <laughs> is for that. Now, granted, like, they're going to lose money, and, and the, all it's going to do is it's going to hurt the bottom line, but they're not, like, the tour's not going to lose money. Um, it's not going to be a big deal to them, but still, it's like, that's why you buy insurance. Like, the whole point is if something bad happens, you're paying They were like, for it. this was like uniquely, like this was uniquely bad. So you don't deserve That's incredible. I don't understand. <laughs> they said, there was no vaccine against COVID in March, 2020. No drugs to treat it. Ventilators were in short supply. N95 masks were all but non-existent. The mortality rate was unknown. And to give just one example of the potential fatality rate, by late March 2020, New York City was using refrigerated trucks as temporary morgues. People were terrified, which I guess means that they're not entitled to. Yeah, which means the insurance company's <laughs> off the hook. Like, why are I they? I don't know. Why is an insurance company like getting off the hook? I don't get it at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they. But why? They why should have been denied just for having the Taylor Swift? Quote why the Taylor there. Swift quote? That's oh, what, that's because the the judge wanted. No, the to make, judge wanted did, to be news. Yeah, the judge wanted the headline. Yeah, it's even worse. The judge should be disrobed 
It was it's yeah. They should it should be disbarred. Get out of here. You're you're done. Yeah. Like unserious. The whole point exactly. The Highly reason unserious. the reason the Taylor Swift thing was because it was Metallica and the judge wanted to make sure that the judge's name got you know got in a headline and look at the mm-hmm. attention I get. It's all garbage. That judge should should be disbarred. Get out of here. Or you know taken off the bench. Get out of here. Get out of here. Beat it. We have all right. chasing judges. Now. Speaking of it's uh, true. That's what's happening in New York with Trump. Uh, yeah. Hot take from an artist named Faye Webster. We need your take on this, Phil. Uh, Faye Webster says, I hate Bob Dylan. I just never got into it. Can't stand him. And on the Beatles, I don't care. I have a story about Bob Dylan. So I was just in LA Mm -hmm. and uh, we were at Henson Recording Studios. That's where they recorded uh, We Are the World. So Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, Diana Ross, Paul Simon, you know, everybody that was anybody in the 80s was there. The original virtue signal. Yeah, the original virtue signal. And Bob Dylan was there. And Bob Dylan was fully aware that he shouldn't have been there <laughs> because he was around great musicians. And he sings like this. No, anyway, anyway. Honestly, like most of them weren't giving like Michael Jackson was on that recording. No, but I mean that. Michael I, Jackson was even seen on the video like side eyeing them for, oh, for singing so badly. So the, that that whole thing happened after the AMA. So the AMAs happened and they recorded it that song in okay. one night, overnight. So everybody went to the AMAs and then they went there. Everybody's tired and Michael Jackson is over everyone's bullshit because Michael Jackson is the real deal or he was the real deal. Like all the, the like the stories about like great musicians or whatever, there are there are musicians that have done great things that really weren't great musicians that, that had to try and, and bust their hump and blah blah blah. Michael Jackson was the real deal and he didn't approve of anybody. Everybody was blowing it according to Michael. I think that he liked like I think he liked Lionel Richie stuff. There but. you go. So yeah. there's my story those about are, Those are hot takes, though, uh, uh, from the music front. You're kind of just expected to like both the Beatles and Bob Dylan. Yep. It's um, weird, right? And Faye Webster, I looked up, and Bob Dylan. this artist yeah. is 26 years old. Why yeah. would we expect a 26-year-old to be into this music? Because you're, spo- because, uh, you're supposed to say, I was born in the wrong generation, and I don't like music from, from the time I was born. I, I like music from before my time. Like, <laughs> boomers weren't expected worldly. to like music from 60 years before their time. Seems a little bit unbalanced. Yeah, that's 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 kind of true. But uh, I mean, every generation thinks that the that the new generation sucks. So everybody thinks that like the generation that comes after them's music isn't music. Do you guys feel like the? Do you feel like there's been significant progression in music in the last twenty years? Uh, define progression. Uh, creative changes. Okay. Um, change, but not good change. Creative. Necessarily. I said. Oh. So I mean, something the, that maybe that. Whether or not you particularly appreciate it, something maybe not something that you're that you are fond of or that you that speaks to you, but something that you can appreciate that it's new and, and creative and different. Personally, I think there are some things in electronic music that do that, but other than that, I love it's ele- been the I've, same stuff. And I love electronic music in a lot of respects. Like mm-hmm. electronic music with female artists, you know, vocals is something that I can get behind a lot. To me, as a lights uh, changed music yeah. and lights by Ellie yes. Goulding that changed music. Like for for everything after that is is a little bit different because Ellie Goulding that song. Yeah, so. and that kind of dovetailed with like the the dubstep era that came just before that and stuff like that. Um, but to me. As a layman who doesn't, you know, understand the the world of music outside of just what I like and what I don't like, it seems like most of what I see these days has been more on the production side. Like they've worked to figure out what audiences, what will gravitate toward, toward audiences. For instance, songs just being shorter, lack of bridge, lack of chorus, two, ver- you know, one to two verses and you're done. It's two minutes and forty seconds um, because it's designed to be listened on Spotify as part of a playlist yep. rather than a full song. To me, the the biggest loss is the la- loss of the full album, of mm-hmm. listening to an entire album the whole way through because it was a completely different music experience, which is why I was never a vinyl collector, but a lot of my friends are vinyl collectors, and they would base their taste in music more on, is this a record that I want to consume while doing other things around the house because I want to experience the album as a whole, whereas now it feels more like it's designed for public consumption uh, because everybody releases everything as singles. You got a $20 right? from Crispy Leg Transport LLC. Good afternoon. Rap has gotten worse thanks to the education system. <laughs> uh, you could make the yes, argument. Yes, rap, rap today is way worse than rap in the 90s. Rap in the 90s was 
awesome. I was, I was and the two thousand. Probably. I was telling someone earlier that like um, when I had to explain to someone that I, I grew up listening to like artists like Brother Lynch Hung and Spice One who did really vile lyrics, but the actual arrangements of songs were really really interesting mm -hmm. and captured the emotional sense of what they were talking about. I feel like there's a disconnect there now because so much of the beat production feels very bland and universal like any artist's voice could go over it and they'll just drop it in there whereas the stuff that i listened to before if i'm listening to an old black market productions records there are certain artists that are going to fit on those tracks that are dark and kind of evil sounding and it made sense even even like all of the old no limit records from master p and silk the mm -hmm. shocker and stuff like that had a song had a sound for the time yep. that just it kind of defined the era you were living in. And nowadays I just, and again, it could be just cause I'm older and I just, I don't connect with a lot of the, young, I'm not going to be the dude who's like, Oh, those mumble rappers. Blah, 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 blah. Like I have no problem with like juice world and some of these other artists. Like there's, there are some that I like. I can't say that I, I'm not familiar with them, but I haven't heard anybody that. And juice world isn't a mumble rapper. I'm just saying like, I have no problem with certain artists that are popular today that they don't bother me. We got another you? 20 yeah. from Gordon Shumway. Boomers totally like music from before their time. A lot of great rock and roll from the 60s was just those artists copying blues artists from the 40s and 50s. See Hendrix, Joplin, Rolling Stones, etc. Well, I don't know enough about the history of it to to say. Uh, they're, they're, they're actually pretty fairly accurate. What do you think about the cha changes in music in the past, say, 20, 30 years? I mean, I don't really have hot music takes, um, but... I have noticed that recently I'm just so tired of music and I don't really enjoy listening to it anymore because there's nothing new that mm -hmm. I listen to. Um, I mostly, I think I mostly listen to music that was made for millennials at this point. Um, I, I like hyper pop. That's a extremely, that's an extremely Gen Z yeah. music genre or subgenre, I guess. I like an artist named Rod Wave who has a, it's a genre called soul trap, which is kind of a mixture of trap music and uh, what would have been not R uh, kind of like R and B in the past, right? Mm -hmm. So soul R and B mixed with trap house beats and stuff like that. And I like that because it lends itself to alternative production. So as good as the songs are, as soon as he releases one, a bunch of like really really good YouTube like music producers who do like mashups and stuff will put him together with a bunch of like artists from other genres. So they'll put him with country artists, or mm -hmm. they'll put him yep. with pop artists. And I think that that's stuff sounds really really good so that is uh i think a growth in the industry and a growth in production the problem is is that then if you want to go see that artist live you're not going to hear that that version of it in you know yeah. at the show yeah. so you have to be good with both the actual full albums as they come out or the singles but also go look beyond that and i tend to go through phases with music where like every three months i go down a rabbit hole and spend like a couple of days finding a bunch of new stuff and then three months go by and i do it again so my, my main playlist that I listen to on any given day kind of shuffles from there. But my genres are so all over the place that I don't really have a preferred genre or anything. I don't think, I haven't heard anything musically that's been remarkably creative. There have been creative ways, I catch your, your camera. It's always right? gonna happen. Um, I, there have been creative approaches to mixing genres that I think is one thing that happens a lot. Um, people in chat are talking about Sleep Token and I think Sleep Token does that really, so really that well. So that probably, like those aspects of it probably ring more true to you because you understand the music production side of things. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's it's more writing though, the way that yeah. they write the songs and stuff because they're they're really, you're getting a lot of bands that are, are far more comfortable mixing styles than say they were, you know, 25 years ago. When, when, when I got started doing like metal and we started doing metalcore bands like, there weren't bands that did. You know, I could probably count on the. On, hey, hey, thank you. I could probably count on one hand the number of bands that actually had like singing, actual singing, and actual screaming. Yeah. You know, so it was it, it was a whole new thing for us to do. And mixing metal and hardcore and stuff that was again something new. And you had bands like Primus that were really different. You had bands like, uh, even though I'm not a fan of Red Hot Chili Peppers, nobody else sounded like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Um, and there, I think there was a lot of bands like that. Mazzy Star, there's not you don't oh, hear wow. stuff like Mazzy yeah, Star and in, in, in stuff like Portishead, even though they were like an electronic band, it was very different. There was a lot of really cool, creative music coming out the of faint. the 90s. Pardon me? The Faint. 
I'm not familiar with Faint them, is really really good uh, more from that genre like but Portishead Shed is really really yeah, good as well. Yeah and it's I, I don't do think that I don't think that's coming. I like I don't think that happens now. I think that it's people that are mixing styles but I don't hear creative music the same way. Like I I feel like they're I feel like it's samples of other stuff that's already existed put together differently yeah. than it is taking something and let and writing it with an influence and and I'm not sure I'm articulating what I'm what I pick up quite properly yeah. but uh but yeah I feel like there's a lot of mixing and not a lot of there's 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 a lot of creative creativity in the way people put things together but not in the creation of it and, and I'm not I, I'm not happy with the way that art that's articulating but I, I haven't put a lot of thought into it so I can get it better so all right uh what <laughs> We were discussing before the show whether this counts as pop culture. I don't really care because I find this absolutely hilarious. I want to talk about Don Lemon's demands of Elon Musk and all of the things that he wanted to do his show on X. And I figure if we can talk about uh, about Elliot Page, then we can talk about Don Lemon asking Elon Musk to make him the first person to do a podcast in space. God. Just the ultimate diva. He's, his, his name should be Diva Lemon. So the, 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 I was looking at the, like he has his, like the Don Lemon uh, X strategy with all of the things that they like were looking into what they were going to do for content. So it says live audio, exclusive first window on X. He commits to no less than one audio space per week. Uh, live video, Don Lemon commits to one, no less than one video space per week. Are there video spaces? Yeah. I thought spaces were only... I didn't no, know they're, that. They're, 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 spa okay. they're video spaces. Uh, On-demand video, three to five days a week, a full-length video on X for the Untitled Don Lemon Show. Questions for X, can live stream audio or video be saved, downloaded for on-demand? So that's a question he wanted to ask of them. Uh, and then premium subscriptions, he will consult with X on premium offerings. Uh, and then it goes down to the months. He wanted $5 million advance. That's crazy. Like he wanted a $5 million I, advance. Is anyone this interested in what Don Lemon has to say? No. No. I, His, why would, I'm confused as to why he was offered the opportunity in the first place. Because it, he, well, okay. Sympathy? Because, <laughs> because, because it would have looked good for X to have Don come over. right? Why? If, Don, why? if Don had come over, if Don had come over and done, say, something like Cuomo's doing, which is actually trying to move away from the, the legacy meet, you may not approve of him, but just hear so me out. So boring. Just, just hear me out. And just hear me out. Um, if they could get him to move away from the legacy media format and actually do something on X that was that was received well it makes X look like the hero platform and also it gives Don the opportunity to look like the guy that broke away it was a it was a good opportunity bridge building we need, no, exactly we, you know what we need to do we need to do a like a cast castle bit where I tell Tim I want a cyber truck and to be launched into space to do a podcast and uh, and see and be like I want five million dollars in a cyber truck to do this podcast this was our pitch for PCC that, exactly right so uh, this was the, he says he wanted Equity partner, like he wanted equity from from X. I mean, the, I don't believe that there was ever a serious thought of getting any of this. Like, so I don't, Don I mean, to receive Tesla Cybertruck as yep. well. First podcast in space to be hosted by Don via SpaceX. I can't think of a less deserving person. Have William host, Shatner do the first podcast He wanted in space. to host debates with Elon around the presidential election. <laughs> so there's, I got a story to go along with this too. There's a band out there that I'm not, I'm never going to say their name, but they're, they wanted, they're, they're, booking agent hit us up and they said we want you to do a tour with them and I was like I'm not doing a tour with them and they were like well hypothetically what would you have to do to do a tour with them I'm like I'm not doing it like it's not it's not an option for me and blah 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 like we the band doesn't want to do it we we talked about it we're just not looking to do this one well what would it take and I was like what is the the straw that will break the camel's back for him like what is it that is just over the line too much? Because I want all of that, and then I want an additional ten thousand dollars every night. I think, and that, that was <laughs> that was the thing. I was like, the point was they're never gonna say yes, and like, and that's I, that's so what I feel like Don did here. So yeah, it's like the super big ass. Like just no, you we know. We just had a we just had a topic the other day where this actress from an old Harry Potter movie said uh, they offered her a role in this Marvel television show, and she hates coming to America. So she's mm. like, oh, I'll ask for a million just because uh, you know I don't want to do it, and I hate coming to America. Yeah. So that's basically what this was, right? He's like, I want all this stuff. Like, also, the idea that you're going to get, like, give me a $5 million advance and the Cybertruck. Bro, buy the Cybertruck. Yeah, right. They gave you a $5 million advance. Well, they 
said the the craziest part is he was asking for censorship authority over the content on X from other creators. Oh. It said he flips to censorship when he wanted control and input on every creator that was coming onto the platform. He wanted a voice into what type of news information would be on the platform. And separately, he wanted to make decisions about X policies. Yeah. So he was making some demands to literally be an executive of the company, yeah. not just have a show on the platform. I can't think of anybody with less interesting opinions. He's, you know, or, or less he clout. doesn't have organic, like a, a fan base, right? I, like nobody is really that curious about what Don Lemon has to say. If anything, the idea would be that he would pull in the, the right-leaning people who are already on the platform because they would see the novelty of the guy having a branded show on the platform. Right? Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. and, and people, and let's face it, people like to see people come around to different points of view. Yeah, yeah. You can, this is why I always laugh at these things. Like everyone thinks that everybody is, as tribal as everyone is, everyone's just waiting for you to have like one view that, that descend, that descends from like the, your current, uh, however you're perceived currently. Yep. Uh, it's also one of the reasons why I find the racism argument so stupid from both sides. I'm like, except for both sides love to bring in people who look different than them to bolster the point. And they really do. They do. You mean Don Lemon? No, I'm saying, I'm just saying in general, both both sides of the aisle love to pull in people. Tokens. To, yes, they do. And to say that they don't is disingenuous. If you're political, they like to do that. Okay? Uh, they do. People on the left don't do that. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? They are, they are inherently racist by nature, so it does not matter. Uh, but people on the left don't ever prioritize someone for being white. <laughs> okay. People on the left, but, but they but they do it with their own people of their own viewpoints anyways from both races. Okay. People on the right pull people in and say, "Look at this person who agrees with us, who looks differently than us." Yeah, the left doesn't yeah. do that. But they the left is then le the left is never like, "Let's get this really normal looking person to yeah. agree with us." They never they never do that. That's and, not a and, thing. Uh, the right does that. So for something like this, I don't see like Don Lemon actually building an audience organically, but it could happen if he actually changed his viewpoints. But he doesn't want to change his viewpoints. I, I don't understand the Chris Cuomo decision either, like him joining Patrick Pat David's yeah. company. He's so uninteresting. It's actually crazy. He's just saying things that are like vaguely anti-censorship. Yeah. And they're like, come on board. We'll give you tons of money. Yeah. Like, I don't know. He's just saying vague platitudes about free speech that we already heard a thousand times like seven years ago. And I guess like to my point, what I was saying before is like the people on the left, it's already full of white people that talk about how awful, awful white people are. So they don't need to do that. Okay. So, but for Don Lemon, he could have organically built an audience on the right, but I don't think he's going to because he doesn't actually share no. those views as his interview with Elon Musk asserts. I'm not sure that Don Lemon has strong views at all i feel like don lemon is kind of like the 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 kind of quintessential grifter mm. like i don't think that he has strong opinions i think he'll say whatever he's supposed to say to to get attention and i don't either he knew that this stuff was well, never going to happen or he's really stupid to think that this stuff was going to happen that he would get that out of out of musk so he it i, I don't i know I, i'm actually starting to lean towards actually dumb thinking that he could get away with it, <laughs> yeah. honestly. I like the idea that he like lowballs him. He's like, no Cybertruck, but I'll give you like a Tesla Model. <laughs> he's like, I'll give Model you, 3? He's like, I'll give you 2 million and a Tesla Model 3, but no, you don't get this. How about truck. no show? You just get a Cybertruck. And we part ways. You get the uh, Cybertruck, but it's not one of the bulletproof ones. You get like a, get a, you get one that was a test model that I, didn't prove to be bulletproof. I do have to say, I like the actual choice of uh, action that they went with, which is just clowning Don Lemon on X. Did yeah, Tim actually like buy DonLemonParty.com? He did. <laughs> like, that's actually a thing. Did you see the video okay. of, um, of, like, the people who have gotten the Cybertrucks now that are showing, like, the shooting it with different caliber of web, like weapons? I've see heard. See one of them? There's this great one where he shoots it, everything down from, like, a 22 long all the way up to a 50 cal. Jeez. And the 50 cal just goes oh, yeah. clean through it. 50 cal's like, yo, yeah, man. So like, I can a... see the other side of the... <laughs> I can see the sun easy, coming out the other side. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. All right, uh, Mary, what's going on with Ariana Grande? Yeah, Ariana Grande is finalizing her divorce from Dalton Gomez, and a lot of her fans are really angry that she has to pay out to her ex-husband because she obviously makes way more money than him. So here were the She's details so of the final agreement. 
Ariana has to make a one-time payment of $1.25 million to Dalton Gomez. He gets no future alimony after that. Half of the proceeds of the sale of their L.A. home have to go to Dalton, mm. and she'll have to pay up to 25000 for Dalton's attorney fees. That is a drop in the Ariana Grande bucket. Yeah. What is her net worth? She's got to be close to... Like half a billion. Now I'm sure writing a check for 1.25 sucks. I'm sure it sucks, but I'm sure that she's also going to be fine. Wait, is it Grande or Grande? It's Grande, right? It's always been Grande. Okay. What do you mean? I thought Phil said Grande. I don't know. No. Name is I. I like. I I don't. Well, here are some of the reactions. What the hell? Why should she pay him? Because she. She shouldn't have to pay him a single dime. She's paying him to go away. He did something we may never know about. We're just going to hear what she did, and she's painted as a bad guy. He definitely did something. (laughs) Um, They're saying she's doing charity work. Why is it up to Ariana to pay for all of this? This is unfair. Wah, wah, wah. They're all really mad, and they're calling him a gold digger. It is hilarious the way that people behave. (laughs) It's crazy because... Yeah, it's crazy. She's very clearly at fault here because, you know, even if she will give us the official story differently, it's heavily speculated that Ariana cheated on him with her current boyfriend, Ethan Slater, who also was a married man at the time. So she's clearly at fault, and she would have needed to pay even if it were a mutual agreement to split up Why anyway. Is that really garbage? <laughs> um... Well, Dalton definitely he wasn't um he wasn't poor. Like, you know, he definitely wasn't middle class before this. He was like a high end LA real estate guy. Yeah. Um, but she obviously makes way more than him. Said that she was worth seventy two million as of twenty twenty. This is Whether like the amount of money that this not. woman is worth, she is hmm. she is never gonna run out of money. Like she's fine. Even giving him one point two five. It's fine. I would have thought her net worth was higher than that uh, because no, okay, this one says her estimated worth is two hundred and forty million. Yeah, it's got to be at least that because she's like branded things. And if you look at someone like Selena Gomez, <laughs> she's a billionaire. Someone that Victor White in the chat she's like she's aging badly. She looks great. It's Shut the up. Hair. <laughs> she, it's the, the hair doesn't match the skin tone well. I don't she, think I, it's that she's aging. I think it's that she's making bad decisions with her appearance. maybe look, but <laughs> the picture that that's on Pop Buzz or whatever, or Buzzing Pop, like she looks great. Yeah, it definitely looks unrecognizable from her former self. And I was just looking at these older photos of her yeah. because of our research about like Nickelodeon and stuff. Yeah, she looks crazy. like a totally different person. Yeah. I mean, she used to be kind of recognizably Italian and now she's just kind of vaguely white. I, but then uh, she used to be black there's, yeah, and then there's she a... started Asian, like, looking Asian and then went off of that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> her rampaging Marshall Marshall's like she's likely anorexic a little bit. No, she's probably not anorexic. Why do you say that? Because I think everybody's brain is just uh, completely, totally blown out of whack because most people walking around are extremely overweight. I like this meme. <laughs> Ariana Grande used to look like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Now she looks like Ariel, Ariel from, from The Little, Little Mermaid. Mermaid. Yeah, the way that she race swapped herself like 10 times will never <laughs> not baffle me. Yeah. Um, but she gets away with it. How does she keep getting away with it? Well, because she's Hispanic, right? No. She's got some, or she no. all, she's all white girl? She's no, she's Italian. Italian. She like oh. is of Italian descent. So they're like, oh no, she just tans yeah. like that. Like, no, I no. Used to, I used to like kind of like wonder about the people who talk about um, speaking of this topic as we were talking about Aaron Taylor Johnson the other day and there were multiple comments on uh, our video that said Jew uh, said like Jew, Jews are not white because the thumbnail for ours said like James Bond yeah. is a white guy still and Schrodinger's like, Jew, uh, like, white guy is what the Jews are and I'm like okay like <laughs> the point is that he's going to be perceived as white on the cover of the movie because normal yeah. people who aren't terminally online aren't going to be like, is he Jewish? I mean, is Jews, he even, Caucasians yes. of convenience. Yes. Is, he, is he even the first Jew to play James Bond? I have no idea. I have yeah, no, for all I know, yeah. he could not be. It's so dumb. 
Um, the point is, is that's that's an argument that people are going to... Yes, even in the chat. So he says, Aaron Taylor Johnson is Jewish. Yes, I know. But I'm saying that for all intents and purposes, if you just look at the cover of the movie uh, and, you don't know the, and you don't know the guy's name, you don't know anything about his background, you're going to assume that he's a white yeah. guy. Literally anyone would look at him and think he's a white guy. Yeah. So that's really all that meaningfully... Clitorum in the chat says, well, matters. Polish, the Polish aren't white either. So wait, so I'm not white? The, we would that's need the first crazy. Next is the first Slavic James Bond. We need the first Slavic I'm, James Bond. I'm Croatian and Polish, so I'm not white. Fantastic. Polish chicks are hot there usually. Those those Warsaw girls. Polish chicks are hot. <laughs> All right, what would you like to see? Cringe or cute of the day? By the way, guys, submit your cute Little of the day fed. at cute of the day. Or I'm sorry, at PCC Pets or hashtag PCC Pets on Twitter because we're running out of cute of the day. We gotta have your pets. So maybe everyone's PCC sick pets. of cute of the day. No? Well, maybe. they're not sending in. If they don't, if too nihilistic for cute of the day. Uh, well, I'm also like I don't. I only take them from posts. I don't take them from like messages and stuff like mm. that because it's it's. I need it from a post. Mm -hmm. So hashtag PCC pets. Send them there, guys. Uh, so cringe or cute first. Phil, you decide. Cringe. Cringe first. Let's make it go okay. Away. Uh, I saw this video today. Western game developers scream at a convention against Gamergate, the patriarchy, and the industry. Oh, totally no. sane behavior. No wonder they end up making female characters look like vegan gremlins. Okay. <laughs> is this real? This is this is what the left like women do all the time. Like is this real? Women. They just yell. They they were screaming like this when Donald Trump won. This could have been from any protest. No! Look at that lady's hair looks like a bomb pop. <laughs> it does. That's it looks good. like Superman ice cream. Oh, holy crap. You're uh, going to fix your shot there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, bomb pop. But are, you, are we sure this is real? Uh, if it's not, it's great. Where are they? Some city. The like park they in organized some city. an anti Gamergate 2 rally? Uh, yeah, of course uh, they did. Western game developers uh, screaming at GDC, game developer convention. I don't know. Uh, against Gamergate. So, yeah. <laughs> and they're all wearing masks. It's definitely the cringiest. Yeah. How can they scream that loud with masks on? Rock on, Gamergate. It's still going on. Mm. Yeah. Gamergate 2 Electric Boogaloo is happening in real time. And the ADL it is, is getting happening. involved because yes. they want to start censoring you and censoring your kids and censoring everyone you know yeah. because you say mean things to other people online. I don't know how more people aren't paying attention to the, the FBI news. The fact that game companies are working with the FBI. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. I mean... Everybody that kind of knows about the FBI and, and knows about what was going on with like the Twitter files and stuff, they kind of already all, already know this stuff. So I watched this, another video yesterday where it says like uh, like FBI agent and Navy SEAL both shoot a 50 cal and uh, like to see who can handle the recoil better. Mm -hmm. And all of the comments were like, the FBI agent was probably imagining an unarmed citizen. The FBI mm -hmm. agent was probably imagining a, yeah. Um, they, <laughs> David they were, Koresh. They were, yes, basically. All right, let's go ahead and look at some uh, cute of the day then here. First things first, this is from Corey, first oh. ambassador to the moon. That is a good looking dog. It's a good looking dog. Right there. Oh. It says, Barley on guard against squirrels and rabbits with a little nap in mm. between. He's on watch. He is. Let's do one more here. All right, this is from Cookie, uh, Cookie Don in tw uh, 15. It says, Hawks perching on the backyard palm tree. Nice. Oh, I couldn't see it first. <laughs> Two of them. Sick. All right. All right. Now that we are, what, 53 minutes into the show, ladies and gentlemen, Mary, let's go ahead and get started. Mm -hmm. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Tell us what the hell I'm is going on. I'm profusely crying from my left eye. Still? Yes, still, but I'm ready. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Tell us what's going on with yeah. Ellen Page. So recently, the actor formerly known as Ellen Page, Elliot Page, did an interview with Channel 4 in the UK to talk about trans joy and transitioning, being misgendered, and a new film called Close to You, in which Elliot Page plays a trans character named Sam who goes to a dreaded family reunion and has to deal with transphobic relatives at home. So uh, they asked Elliot Page about the culture war, which is victimizing the trans community. And in response, Elliot Page said, uncomfortable is an understatement. Well, this video made me uncomfortable and a lot of people uncomfortable because, you know, Elliot Page doesn't look 
too good right now. Um, I can see that at the very least, uh, this person is extremely unhappy, is unable to make eye contact for even a split second, and just looks extremely frail and malnourished, honestly. So Why anyone let's take a look at that clip. Here we go. It's a sort of culture war playing out in which trans people have been kind of put in the middle of. And I just wondered how you feel about that. And it, when it comes to the devastating impact of um, what politicians and, and governments are doing and saying it's uh, uncomfortable is an understatement. Um, it's actually uh, horrific and has like extremely devastating consequences for a community that already really struggles to just exist. You could see that, right? She can't make eye contact. Yeah. She's incapable of making yeah. eye contact with the interviewer for even a second. Um, this is just somebody who's very obviously deeply insecure and not at peace with themselves. She, like, she literally went from like a reasonably attractive young lady to the lowest <laughs> member of society. Like, it's rough to be a manlet that's like a trans manlet like you really want men get ignored and men get like you know disregarded i can't imagine why every trans every trans man isn't making that same bawling their eyes out yeah. i'm you know we're i can't believe how lonely it is and i can't believe you know how how much i get ignored and da 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 i was explaining to mary beforehand it's like i'm already short for a guy at like five five yeah. and, and elliot page is five one five one well like that this is the... obviously a special case because you know if you transition in the hollywood space yeah. you're going to get endlessly affirmed and praised for that and, this and that's going to be the only thing you get attention for from then on yeah the, so the number one thing that i always think about is like when you when you do this when you start banking on your identity and this happens to actors in lgbtq roles as well then the only movies they hire you for yeah. are for ones pertaining to that topic but the i only... think that that's what elliot page wants Probably. because you can see that uh, with her character in the Umbrella Academy, this was originally based on a story where she played a female character. They had her character transition in the show so that she could play a trans character. Um, and then played this trans character in another movie. So I think this just shows how all-consuming that identity crisis can be. We got a $20 from Steven Van Dalen Wetters said a coalition of communities of color agreed that the Slavic community experiences similar barriers as people of color. That's why Luke is a P POC. Well, that oh, well. means me as a Polish Croatian have just gone through unspeakable, unspeakable things. And to get where I am today as the host of a podcast really is a testament to my strength. You're breaking glass ceilings I am as we speak. Every single day. Now they're, they're very low ceilings because I'm short, but in general, yes, I am breaking glass ceilings being the uh, culture warrior that I am. There's another clip from this interview where they had Elliot Page address being misgendered, especially um, by friends and family members. Absolutely. Is that the Ollie, Ollie London one? This one? No. Can you resend it? Okay. Uh, I thought I had it. Here you go. Let's go here. I thought I had that one. Maybe, oh, maybe I did have it. I just thought it was the same as the last one. LGBTQ plus people will be familiar with that sort of sense of dread or unease about being around certain family members. It is a lot of people's experience, unfortunately, those feelings of dread. I wish it was not. Um, and I think we wanted to get across Maybe it's things that people don't understand uh, happen frequently and consistently to queer and trans people all the time, including within their families. I think we were trying to capture all the sort of nuanced ways of what it can feel like. And is it something you can relate to in your own life, kind of that slight unease in certain family situations or with certain groups of friends? Or I, Yes, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, still being early on in, in my transition, of course, but like more used to it now. I think at first, when you first come out as trans, you're like, oh my God, you know, all these situations you find yourself in and maybe you just 
I guess, progressively kind of get used to it. There's a very powerful scene in the film where Sam's mum misgenders him. And actually, interestingly, he is kind of trying to make her feel more comfortable in that situation. I just wondered whether you think that's quite common for LGBTQ plus people. Very common, yeah. <laughs> like, if someone, you know, misgenders me and out of just... Like, you can tell when something's, like, intentional and awful. There's another thing, like, it's, it's, it's not a big deal, you know? It's, oh, sorry, fix it, you move. It's absolutely a big deal to them. That's not true. And most don't make the distinction between accidental and on purpose. Mm. This was the whole point of the discussion with J.K. Rowling the other day, with the person that was like getting sued by J.K. Rowling, saying that she does it on purpose. Yeah, I mean, if it's totally at the mercy of the person being misgendered, whether it was on purpose, it's you're not on. safe. It's really not. If someone keeps doing it consistently over and over again, you know, that's that's a different conversation. In society, we have quite a straight jacket of what we're supposed to be. I know you've spoken about this in, in Hollywood as well, you know. Yes, and for cishet people, of course, as well. And that's why I'm like, oh my God, why can't we all just connect on this, right? We're all just inundated from the moment we're born. <laughs> Some people even have parties before that <laughs> about- Oh, the gender reveals. Exactly, like how, how you should be, how you should, look what success means like yes all of those things we're all facing all facing those pressures and i think you see that in the film okay it's so just so ridiculous it's just so ridiculous i think that she obviously lacks perspective because most people do not feel inundated by pressure to no. behave as a man or a woman you just fall into that role naturally because it's biologically and spiritually ingrained in you um, and I think if you start to feel some, you know, disease with your maleness or femaleness, it's a reaction to some kind of trauma. And Ollie London pointed out this actress who transitioned in 2020 had her breasts cut off after just one consultation with a doctor has previously claimed she experiences trans joy every day despite appearing in multiple interviews, appearing downcast and fragile. She looks like the Wojak, that, that, that exhausted, tired, broken, yeah. with a scrubbly and hair just, Wojak. It, it's difficult to even listen to her voice. It's jarring to that, that change in her voice has taken place. Um, and then in her memoir, Page Boy, she spoke of having a psychotic breakdown and voices in her head telling her to transition shortly before she underwent medical changes. I can't. So that sounds like demonic possession to me. Um, and let's not forget Harley Pasternak's influence here. Mm -hmm. um, Elliot Page was one of Harley Pasternak's clients. Uh, as on the set of a movie. Okay, it was but... The, it, was, it was hired by the studio. So Kanye was one of Harley Pasternak's clients for a music video. That doesn't mean anything about whether that fitness training was strictly yeah. fitness training. It seems like this person is trained in conducting psyops. I think the majority of this is just the overt focus on looking... Is, it, it's a narcissistic focus on your own identity that I just... I guess maybe I just don't understand because I just don't worry about those types of labels in words as to what it means for me or like what my actions say about me or my gender. I don't gender think that or, anybody that's, that yeah. doesn't have gender dysphoria does. Yeah. Well, there's this telling description for that memoir from last year where it says, as Elliot Page navigated cri criticism and abuse from some of the most powerful people in Hollywood, and a society dead set on forcing him into a binary, Elliot often stayed silent, unsure of what to do, until enough was enough. So, basically, you're coming out and saying that you were abused by powerful people in Hollywood. Um, and I, that leads me to the conclusion that your transition is actually a reaction to that. Thank you. I've uh, put our video on Harley Pasternak in the chat if anybody wants to look at it. We did a video on Harley Pasternak and his role with Kanye and other things. It's in the chat there if people want to look at it later. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't be the first person to say it, but I think that it's quite obvious 
Um, Elliot Page's transition was a reaction to abuse. And I think that's observable in a lot of different instances. And Lauren Chen happened to post about this when the interview came out. She said, I don't care how politically incorrect this is. It's so obvious. I'm just going to say it. Ellen Page was sexually abused by perverts in Hollywood. I'd guess this caused her to hate her own body and any aspects of her own femininity that might have made her attractive to her abusers. This is likely why she began self-harming, which she admits to. Enter the trans narrative. By becoming a trans man, she not only gets to mutilate her own body and remove its femininity, hello, top surgery, with the full support of the medical community, but on top of that, she also gets praised and label labeled brave and inspiring for coming out. She's not a man. She's a traumatized, mentally unwell woman who needs to unpack unpack what happened to her and find healthy coping mechanisms not to be told her body is wrong and given hormones and surgery and you know medical transition aside defeminization is a noted coping me mechanism that abuse victims turn to uh that female abuse victims do uh after they've been abused because they blame themselves for the abuse in some sense uh, or another when they haven't properly resolved it in their minds um, and they blame their own femininity for what they suffered so naturally the then you have the experts telling you oh that's actually a good thing you should actually lean into that and before you know it you're actually at a point of no return yeah i just i see stories like this and for like it, also to stay in the industry is a is a big thing to not remove yourself from the industry entirely because at one point you like you said there's this dark side that theoretically of course we can't confirm that that's if she was abused behind the scenes but then that's how she makes a living that's where her her talents lie right she can't leave and go do something mm -hmm. else most likely in her mind she doesn't see herself capable of leaving it and go finding another line of work so she stays in the industry and is going to now be praised by the same companies mm -hmm. that harbored the abusers theoretically that harmed her and the industry is yeah. probably not all that like the movie industry is not that big where yeah. she can avoid the people that have been yep. uh you know significantly abusive or whatever it or seems it's unlikely like, that she could be able to yeah it seems like the transition that elliot page underwent was actually a survival mechanism to not only just cope with what happened whatever that was but also to stay in the industry and then also other people pointed out the same thing happened to Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes altering her appearance so she can appear as unattractive as possible to men after being traumatized and sexualized as a child star is my Roman Empire. <laughs> like, it's clearly a pattern that we see in a lot of different people. Yeah. Uh, the desire to make yourself unattractive. Yeah. Uh, does that go hand in hand with Hollywood's seeming design desire to remove traditional beauty from what they use to advertise movies and television? Going towards less attractive characters, going towards less attractive body types? That seems like more of an ideologically driven yeah. trend. But if you also have vulnerable people who are in the public spotlight that want that outcome anyway, seems like the, the perfect you know, match made in hell. Professionally from people in these situations, uh, somebody mentions, uh, allegedly Ruckus mentions Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato is kind of back to, she's taking care of herself. Yeah, right? she kind of went off the rails mm. for a long time there, but she seems to be snapping back to looking and acting somewhat normal again. Um, but Who's to say if that's just a front too. Professionally, but. I feel bad for the actors that pigeonhole themselves into these roles because then it, it's kind <sighs> of like, when I tell the story about uh, comic book writer Christopher Priest, who used to be able to write whatever characters he wanted, but then as Marvel got more ideologically inclined, they started only offering the black comic book writer roles, you know, the job to write for black characters, when his job as a writer is not to just write characters that look like him because he's not the king of a foreign country either. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's the most surface level argument you can make. So when you be, when all you are becomes just your identity and when your identity is so in vogue, you're not going to get roles doing interesting things that break you away from what you are. And I imagine that a lot of the joy that an actor feels is in portraying something that's very much not them. 
So why would you only want to portray characters that are like you? Well, that's because the message that you're portraying is becomes more important than the actual joy you had at one point for the you know, the profession of acting. We got a $20 from Pat the Plumber. I want to quit my job and move to your neck of the woods and be the man that serves Brett his sheets tacos. Also, the headline is mean, so I'm pretty sure Mary wrote it. <laughs> what headline is mean? The headline of the... the... live stream? How much? Did you write it? We both write it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The, you mean like the, the Elliot page looks unwell? I don't know if it's mean or if it's just... It's just an observation. The mean, <laughs> objective yeah. truth. Yep. You know, I don't know if Elliot Page would even disagree. I don't oh, have any, uh, like, uh, I, I'm not wealthy enough to hire a Sheets Taco. Um, <laughs> he can serve it to you, like... Server. On a silver that. platter. That would be great. Yeah? Yep. I, I think that would be a vibe. Um, but yeah, it's you can't cast Elliot Page in a movie to play a man, can you? Without addressing, obviously, that this person isn't a no. man. Beyond that, the logistics of casting a five foot tall person that is going to be a foot shorter than most of the other people hiring, yeah. they have a hard enough time doing that with Tom Cruise, and he's five six and has producer privileges. Yeah. Okay, they got to work around Tom Cruise doing that. So if you're going to hire Elliot Page as a traditionally male character and you're not going to address it, which I would applaud if you could actually find I a way wouldn't. to do it. No, I'm saying like. It's a horrible what idea. What I'm saying <laughs> is hire the people and don't make it about the identity. I would rather see them do that than make a bunch of movies about. Uh, I don't want to see this identity. on, on but screen. The the problem is, yeah. is when they do that, they're going to have to address the fact that the person is slight and frail and not at all what you normally hire from actors. Now, how long do you figure, especially for leading roles, like you're not, she's, Elliot Page is never going to get leading roles as like a manly guy or like even a borderline manly no. guy. Um, do you, how long do you think until kind of society or, or maybe Hollywood realizes that society's over? that kind of stuff where it's like okay look we can't make another movie about your your mutilated vagina you know like <laughs> like nobody wants to see that uh well that's it there's always going to be a market for woke indie films right I, well i mean there will be i understand what you're saying as like for for indie films and stuff but that doesn't like I, 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 I imagine this is, it's this is end why with people big... were joking about you know elliot page is the next superman like <laughs> Okay, that's obviously that's, never going to happen the, because this isn't, this isn't a man. But like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But people are what? When? When do people? When does the audience become vocally tired of the narcissism? I guess it might be the, the core of my question. <laughs> when does? Because no, because like seriously, it's so like so specific of an audience that likes mm -hmm. this. Like, there are so few trans people. The only people that go to see this are trans people, people in the LGBT group, and people that are like, yo, I'm an ally. Everyone else avoids this kind of stuff like yeah. the plague because they can't relate to it. Well, it's and also it, like this is your mascot for... I did. That mascot is a gross, uh, <laughs> a gross way to think of it, and uh, I don't mind. This but. is your mascot for a movement yeah. about us. You know, we're being our true selves, and we're happier than we've ever been. We're RuPaul so healthy. was a way better and, spokesperson. I mean, but... RuPaul knows he's a man. RuPaul's RuPaul is a drag queen who knows that he is a man and doesn't deny that he is a man. This so is true. This is true. They will There's a big not, difference there. They will not not acknowledge the fact that people just don't want to see movies about this stuff. We just had to go watch a movie last weekend that made identity politics the theme of its entire film, and there was six people in the theater. <laughs> Sorry, right. eight people in the theater. It's not tenable. Yeah. Let's go to Super Chats. Andrew Jacobs said regarding Elliot Page, no Frankenbeans, no opinion. <laughs> Time to turn their language back around on them, boys. Kitov? I don't know how to say that. Swiss said, uh, no beans, no Frank, no opinion. Shane H. Wilder said, happy Thursday, Brett, Mary, and Commander Phil. Brett, let's try not to throw anything at the guest today. We actually like Phil. Yeah, I've got my uh, I've got my post-it notes just in case he gets out of line. We don't want any more abuse and intimidation the, on set. The best part was the sound it made, which was just a just a smack. It's just yeah, <laughs> yeah. You weren't expecting. Look, that. Look, he was talking shit. Okay, you're gonna. He needed to be humbled. Like as far as I'm concerned, I should have put like you D said. <laughs> Day needed to be put in his place. Do one more. DC and C said, Phil, bro, put an OC2 on your voice and raise some demons. What? Uh, OC, I think it might be a, uh, a compressor, okay. uh, but I'm not sure what it is. 
All right, Mary, let's uh, let's hold off on the rest. Let's yeah. come back. What is the outcome? The uh, got a twenty dollar one. Yeah. Oh, is there a twenty dollar one? <laughs> yeah, just because I'm free. Oh, did we miss one? Mm-hmm. Just because I'm free says, we all know what a lady boy is. Just need to come up with a term for the inverse so people can stop using the term created by the leftists. I vote for lady boy and gentle girl for the inverse. <laughs> gentle girl. Gentle girl. <laughs> okay, we are now living in the fallout of the Quiet On Set docu-series about the dark side of kids' TV. And we didn't get into this yesterday because there was just so much to cover in what was revealed in this documentary. Um, basically, if you missed it, Drake Bell was the main draw for this, and he talked about how he was serially abused by a dialogue coach um, hired by Nickelodeon named Brian Peck. And since then, you know, a lot of people who were also former child stars from the network are being what some people would interpret as suspiciously silent. And one of those people is Josh Peck. Josh was Drake's co-star on their show together. And they had this image outwardly like they're very close friends. And maybe it was a one-sided thing. He has not released a statement or anything? Josh Peck has not said anything publicly. No. And a lot of people are side-eyeing him for it. Yes. And they feel like, you know, you ought to stand up for your co-star who... What if you just live with... Like, I, I'm, this isn't the case here. What if you're just somebody who doesn't go on the phone a lot and you don't, like, and you just don't... Okay, care? Josh Peck is literally an influencer and a podcaster. I know. So I'm just saying, you, he's you're very required. much online and he's Nobody, very much aware of what's going on. I, do, I don't care. Nobody should be compelled to say shit about something that didn't happen directly. Not, okay, not compelled, but okay, Josh I think Peck is, is reasonably... In, you know, you would expect or predict him to say something is, at, at some point. Just so I get the story straight, he's implicated in. He is no, no he's so not. They, there, there are accusations. That's not the same. No, this is sorry, his sorry. This is not Brian Peck. This I is didn't Josh Peck. I didn't okay, explain that because right. they happen to have the same last name. But they're okay, not that's yes, all right. Josh right. Peck is not related to Brian Peck, the abuser. Okay. But okay, he Brian was, Peck is actually an abuser. Or Brian is Peck accused? was the convicted, convicted abuser okay. who got hired by Disney right after As his the prison voice coach? sentence. Yeah. As a voice coach? He was a, basically an acting coach. An acting coach, okay. And he went on to work for child stars at Disney. And so this other Peck guy... Josh Peck was, was Drake's co-star. co-star on their show together where they played brothers. And it was and really so popular. And he was a young kid that probably got... Josh Peck probably not since he didn't... You know, he declined to be a part of the documentary and he never okay. accused anyone of anything. So basically... He posted this TikTok that a lot of people felt was targeted at Drake. And he basically was saying, like, if I haven't talked to you since 2023, then we're like nothing. Like, whatever. Don't expect to hear from me. And uh, do you have that? Uh, yes. Here let's, go, yeah. let's just show it. It's obviously shady. If I haven't talked to you since 2023, take that as a fucking sign that you don't exist to me anymore. Damn, you fucking bug. You got sprayed with the raid. What Bye. on? See you in that bar. If I haven't talked to you okay. since 20... 20- okay, so that's what Josh Peck posted on his TikTok. A lot of people thought that that was a diss at Drake. Um, and that was the reason why he wasn't talking about the documentary. And then he started blocking everybody in his comments yeah. who was saying that it was about Drake Bell. Um, which is also not a good look, but it prompted Drake Bell to respond and basically defend Josh Peck for remaining silent on the issue. Let's take a look at that. Please. Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to uh, clear something up. Um, I've noticed a lot of uh, comments on on some of Josh's TikToks and some of his posts. And I just want to let you guys know that um, this is really, uh, you know, processing this and going through this is a really emotional time. And um, a lot of it's very, very difficult. Uh, So not everything is put out to the public, um, but I just want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and, it's it's been very uh, sensitive, um, but he has reached out to uh, uh, to talk with me and and help me work through this and and uh, has been really really great. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh, take it a little easy on him. 
So he seems like a nice guy. What ha This is my problem with these things, right? So when the documentary comes out, okay, then they, they go after Brian Peck, okay? Yeah. Guy who's been convicted of a crime, makes perfect sense. The internet hates him. They want to they wanna go after him, okay? Then they go after James Marsden and all of the people who wrote letters, okay? Makes perfect sense. There's documentation. They don't agree with the fact that they wrote letters for this scumbag. Makes sense. Now the mob is growing. They are not satiated. They have to find somebody else to go after. So now it's a guy who just didn't say the right thing or didn't say the thing they wanted him to say. And it just grows out of control. And it doesn't become about justice for what happened to Drake Bell no, anymore. None it, of this is about justice. All it is about now is public shaming yep. for the sake of power and control yep. over yep. another person. I think people are understandably really upset that Obviously, Brian Peck never faced justice uh, that he deserved to face for what he did to this child. And, you know, he he was in prison for 16 months and yep. went on to immediately work with kids again um, with all of these executives and Hollywood stars writing him character recommendation letters to the judge. And Jesus. like literally 41 character letters in court. And. It just is really upsetting to see that. And then all of these people feel like it's unresolved. So they're looking for who to attack next since Brian Peck obviously hasn't been held accountable. Um, and then, I, like I will say, it's, it's interesting that all of these Nickelodeon stars were reached out to mm -hmm. for this documentary and 90% of them said no. The ones with, <laughs> the ones with actual careers said no. The, the most ones powerful ones, other than Amanda Bynes, <laughs> other than Amanda Bynes, who also declined. Like, I would be shocked if they didn't reach like, out to uh, all no, of them. No, Drake but. Bell is the one who had an act, who still has a career that decided to speak on the record. And everybody else that spoke on the record were not nearly as successful right. as, as he was. Exactly. And thus, that is the problem in Hollywood, is that the people who have something to lose will never speak up about mm -hmm. the wrong things that are going on in that industry. They just won't risk their own bottom line for the right thing. Well, you know that they, you know they, that like they say nobody's actually from California, like especially people in the entertain, entertainment industry. Everyone moves out there. There's no loyalty mm -hmm. or or... There's not a lot of loyalty, at least, um, in in the music industry and in, the, in the, the movie industry. It's like there are some people that, like, if they've been working together 30 years, maybe. But if you're talking about, like, young people that, that have been in the business for 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. they're not loyal to anybody I because mean, they have no reason to be. I mean, you would think they'd at least have some form of solidarity against a common enemy, right? Which would be Dan Schneider or maybe any of the these moment. other... maybe. Maybe People. in the moment when it initially happened, if they were to do this right after it happened, but 10 years have passed or however long has passed, they've moved on You know, professionally. There is more to be lost than there is to be gained by doing this right now. I'm even, I was even a bit cynical about the fact that Drake Bell released a song around the time that this came out. Like, I just am. I'm just cynical, I, I guess. Do you uh, think that was like a wrong decision I, I, on his I just, part? It just comes off as intentional, as in I'm going to ride the 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 information wave and the news wave that comes with the the release of all this information doesn't make what happened to him right but it just makes me think that a lot of it in a lot of respects it always comes back to professional gain in mm -hmm. a lot of things and it's just the the dirty side of an ugly like of an even uglier business yeah and it's depressing but i also i don't like the idea that somebody who wasn't he did not so so josh peck didn't harm anyone right he's never been accused of harming anyone are, are they saying that he uh he stood by and let this happen to drake like what is it about him that requires him to make a public statement on something like this especially like even though i i think that it's good that he gave a you know he reached out to him privately as a friend should like i don't even think it should be necessary think, well, that already, drake bell has to clarify that to begin with josh peck josh peck isn't a well-liked character on the internet given his friendship with david dobrik and you know <laughs> fair enough a lot of things that yeah. he's done and said and he just sometimes seems like a pretty fake person and yeah. people still hold it against him that that he didn't invite Drake to his wedding and it turned into a whole thing. Um, but that's a whole separate issue. 
another former Nickelodeon star went on TikTok live stream and started basically making jokes about Drake yeah. Bell's story. Uh, his name is Devin Workeiser. He was on the show Ned's Declassified, which notably was show run by Scott Fellows, not Dan Schneider. It seems like the kids who were on Scott Fellows shows don't have as many bad experiences, and that might be why he didn't understand the gravity of the situation. But let's look at that that video. Coming. Daniel, we told you never to speak about that. Get back in your hole, Daniel, and give me your holes. Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. We really shouldn't. This is awful. Why are we doing this? Because this is about us. Listen, our set was not like that. Um, uh, and no, it's fucking awful. The 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 Drake Bell shit is a cr like that's crazy to hear. I I that is yeah, fucked, I man. And that never came out, which is really wild. Really wild. I'll tell you who was talking about it. Boop. Ah. Uh. Okay. Oh, so y'all were in on it. Oh god. Damn. <laughs> I'm not talking about this anymore. No. no not no, talking about no, this no, anymore. No, no. Guys, we can't joke like this. Jesus. Guys, we're we're, we're sometimes humor helps us move through things, yeah, you know? 100%. <laughs> it wasn't really your situation to move through. <laughs> Right, like no. you didn't, you 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 said that you weren't traumatized. So, but it's weird because they these Ned's declassified stars they have this podcast together where they talk about all of this debaucherous shit that they got up to as children. They were, they, you know, they said they had access to like drugs and alcohol, and they were like hooking up with each other, and that doesn't sound like a great environment for child stars either. Mm. So. Maybe they're just trying to rationalize what was presented to them as normal mm -hmm. when they were younger. But Drake Bell actually did respond and said, Ned's declassless. This is wild. Laugh it up, guys. Laugh it up. Give me your holes. Really? Yeah. Um, so he was obviously offended by this. Yep. I've seen some more stuff uh, from Nathan Cress. He was Miranda Cosgrove's co-star on iCarly. And people are talking about how he left Nickelodeon after this documentary came out. He allegedly parted ways with the network and unfollowed them on social media. But it's like, it's shady because him and Miranda Cosgrove started this reboot of iCarly without Jeanette McCurdy mm -hmm. because Jeanette McCurdy spoke out against Dan Schneider. Yeah. So you already kind of looked like shitty people. <laughs> but once the documentary is trending then you're going to hop onto the, the right side of history here. Yep. Um, and then another Nickelodeon star named Jordan Lewis, he had his own show called Just Jordan, and I had not heard of it. Again, all of these are but, after my time. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, it seems like it was after my time. He said um, that his show was canceled, stating, I ain't giving up no ass. So he's basically implying that he was pressured to do sexual acts to keep his show on the air at Nickelodeon. I don't know if he was just joking, yeah. just something to keep an eye on. Um, but after all of this has happened, I'm just waiting for when Disney is gonna get exposed, especially since they went on to hire Brian Peck yeah. after he's a registered sex offender. Disney has already been exposed kind of multiple times and it's kind of an ongoing thing now. Mm -hmm. There's there's just kind of, I feel like there's it's, it is an unspoken open secret that like basically every <laughs> millennial in in uh all of the kids who are part of the mickey mouse club yeah they all got some kind of of bad treatment or or uh, assault or or whatever abuse from from adults it seems like it's like the results of like what becomes of all these people is the expose moment what but is, still, uh, I don't know. Like, it, maybe people need a digestible documentary or something uh, to really explain it to them. What is your What is your take? I guess on on um, Josh Peck. Like, should it, did he have a right to to stay silent, or should he have spoken out and made like a public statement? I mean, I do think he had the right to not make a public yeah. statement. Absolutely. Um, maybe but, it would have been better to say something, yeah. though. 
Uh, and I think that given his reputation for being kind of, you know, <laughs> I mean, he, he has a reputation for being more concerned with clout and public perception than real friendships and being a real person. He has a reputation for having a big ego and being self-involved. So this is kind of in character for him. Well, when the uh, when when the the big Tim Cast documentary comes out, I, I will not be making any statements, and I rebuke anyone who tells me that I have to. Yeah. There's like, so why you, didn't you talk about okay. uh, about Phil and Destiny in the green room? Well, there was so <laughs> much that came out about that, and I'm like, look. I'm allowed to keep my opinions to myself, and you don't have a right to make me say shit. By then, the story is going to be twisted so much yeah. that it's like they got into a fist fight in the in the green room. Destiny came up and sat real close to Phil. Yes, Destiny's by. He might. Uh, it's uh, you know all, all I'm saying is that like when the when the Tim Cast documentary gets made, I will not be releasing any statements whatsoever. Me mm -hmm. Zero. Twelve. No, I just think this is all a result of people being pissed off at the lack of resolution in the documentary. You can see that no problems were solved. It's just Hollywood is rotten and yep. there's no solution. All right, <laughs> in the chat, <laughs> allegedly Rekka said, did Phil and Destiny thumb wrestle? That no. would be amazing. Next time, if he, when he comes back, you guys should, you guys should thumb wrestle. Arm, I'm, how about arm wrestle? I'm quite confident there will not be a positive interaction okay. between me and Destiny when he comes back. I'm not gonna bury the hatchet? Uh, I would I've, look if Destiny was like, "Hey, my bad." Yes, but I guarantee he doesn't feel like he did anything wrong, even though he clearly <laughs> acted like an asshole. When has Destiny ever thought he did something? Wrong? I don't know. Corey but. Anderson said, "Former musician Phil." Former? They're like, what do you think? I forgot to, how to play guitar. To see you again. <laughs> Uh, Serenko Productions said Elliot Page more like Elliot Page, but um, tis. okay. <laughs> Dakti Platy said Phil should be mad not at BET Music Awards. What? The, I guess you should be mad that you're not at the BET Music Awards, just like uh, Beyonce is supposed to be mad that she wasn't. Oh yeah. Is there such a thing as the BET yes, Music there Awards? Is, yeah. Oh. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm not the guy. That, I, I'm the guy that would boycott or that wouldn't go to uh, award shows intentionally. So let's do two more. Shane H. Wilder said, "Mary crying out of her left eye is Cashman around?" Could be. He's there's something in the air. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Serenko Productions said, actually, abortions are surprisingly not in The Sims without mods, of course, though you can be a they, them, and even a Zzer. So I stopped playing it. What is the difference between they, them, uh, and Zzer? Um, how special are you feeling that day? There's no difference. They're both mentally ill. All right. All right, Mary. What the hell is going on with Beyonce? Yeah. Beyonce is still in the process of infiltrating country music, and she has now mobilized her entire fan base to start an all-out war with country music fans. And she's introduced this new alter ego of hers named Cowboy Carter. And she released the album cover art where she's like waving this big American flag and riding a horse. Uh, barely an American flag because I can't see any of the. They cropped out they the. They cropped out the. Most I, of I the flag. believe that that was intentional. Yeah, I, oh yeah. I, I, she, didn't she say that she wasn't uh, like she was uh, being uh, being an American is is akin to being a racist or something like that. I'm not, sure like what the, that I'm not sure exactly what the, what the phrase was, but I wouldn't be surprised. Something along those lines. <laughs> so she released this album cover with the following caption complaining about how toxic country music fans are. I feel honored to be the first black woman with the number one single on the Hot Country Songs chart. Hootie's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Darius one, Rucker. Darius Rucker's like, okay, no, he's I've not been a woman. This. It's like, I've been doing this for 20 years. What would he should do? She's a black woman. What he should do is he should, he should just transition and then oh. retroactively yeah usurp her yep that would not have happened without the outpouring of support from each and every one of you my hope is that years from now the mention of an artist's race as it relates to releasing genres of music will be irrelevant okay no. so you highlighting the fact that you're the first black woman to do this or that is actively working against the goal of making your race that, irrelevant. What she just said is one of the most disingenuous things I've ever heard from a Hollywood celebrity. And <laughs> also, if you're a leftist, if you're a leftist, that yes. is considered racism so, because yeah. you aren't supposed that you're supposed to see race. If you if you say I don't see race, that is racist mm -hmm. to a leftist. She figure it out, Beyonce. 
This album has been over five years in the making. It was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I didn't feel welcomed. And it was very clear that I wasn't. But because of that experience, I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive. It feels good to see how music can unite so many people around the world while also amplifying the voices of some of the people who have dedicated so much of their lives educating on our musical history. The criticisms I faced when I first enter entered this genre forced me to propel past limitations that were put on me. Act two is a result of challenging myself, taking my time to bend and blend genre genres together to create this body of work. So basically she is trying to throw shade at the Country Music Awards. And this goes back all the way to 2016. Hold a grudge. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Actually, I'm actually, I kind of have a little bit of respect. Just hold a <laughs> grudge that long. She is a woman, so that makes perfect makes sense. sense. Women don't forget shit. Yeah. So, makes you know, sense. you do one thing wrong in April of 2018. <laughs> boy, boys, she's not forgetting that. It's, it's coming back to bite you. Yeah. It's literally been eight years, and Beyonce is still mad at country music fans. So... Back in 2016, Beyonce was invited to perform at the Country Music Awards with the Dixie Chicks to perform her song, Daddy Lessons, somewhere, which was somewhere. seen as somewhat country-ish. There's a neocon really. crying somewhere that the Dixie Chicks hmm. are performing. The yes. Chicks, you mean? Sorry, the Chicks. <laughs> However, there was a backlash before Beyonce even took the stage. A pre-show announcement teasing her performance sparked calls for a CMA's boycott on social media, with some people blasting the award show for including Beyonce, whose tribute to the Black Panther Party during her performance of Formation at the Super Bowl had also earned pushback. Some viewers also called for a boycott due to the inclusion of The Chicks, formerly known as the Dixie Chicks, who famously pissed off country music by criticizing George Bush at the height of the Iraq War. Well, if criticizing George Bush <laughs> makes you a bad guy. And after the performance, there was no mention of Beyonce's appearance on the CMA's website. Uh, I got a $20 one here from <laughs> Just Cause I, I'm Free. It, is it I'm Free? Yeah, Just Cause I'm Free. Uh. Beyonce's Texas Hold'em is, is country like Brokeback Mountain was a Western. <laughs> Both make me nauseous. <laughs> Uh, That's really good. No, Kudos. they called it a hey ho clap stomp song. Like oh, it's oh. not good. It's uh, okay. So right now, uh, depending on your on your YouTube algorithm, it's just all people dancing to that song. And I just all I picture is all of the country, uh, all of the cowboy hat sales that have been made by companies as influencers buy the hat that they're gonna wear one time to make that video and then throw away. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I, I just don't understand it. I feel like Beyonce has been overhyped for the longest time and you're just not allowed to criticize anything she does. Yes. It's weird. It's like Bob Dylan and the Beatles, but all over again. Yeah. And uh, she it, it's not a good song. So there was a there was an image that I saw that somebody made on DeviantArt of. Um, oh, no. It's the Beyonce. No, say? it's the Beyonce. <laughs> uh, it's the Beyonce cover, except for it extends the photo and the American flag is burning. And that's the long and the short of it, right? Like, they, they don't actually, like, her fans don't like this country, I'm guessing, and uh, believe that it's uh, systematically racist and that it's evil and that doing country music is just another way to help the progressive agenda because all that came before it must burn. Because they need to take yes. away cult things that are culturally relevant to Correct. normal Americans and need to destroy them on the inside and wear them like a skin suit, which is exactly what's happened to a lot of churches. And They cannot create. They can only destroy, as the mm -hmm. saying goes. Yeah, and I I think if you asked... The Beyonce fan base, you would find out that they have disdain for this country and they also have disdain for people who like country music mm -hmm. and they get extreme satisfaction out of feeling like they can infiltrate it. I also and saw that uh, Azalea Banks was saying that uh, basically Beyonce is successful because of her uh, capitalist, uh, basically uh, like her capitalism is re the reason that she's successful. Azalea Banks said, like in 2024, is being the first black woman to have a number one on the country charts an accomplishment when you've clearly used your capitalist advantage to smother out current 
currently existing black artists in country music who have been grinding for years but don't have money to spend on fruit plates and backstage passes to Grammy voters. If you want to do anything, you want to create anything at all, it is totally worth your time to do it in a way that pisses off leftists so you don't have to deal with that crap. They're just to put them out of your mind right away. As soon as she was talking about capitalism, you know that the whole argument is based on leftist politics. Well, she's saying, Azalea Banks is saying Beyonce is being a pick me for white people yeah, yeah. and for the music industry yep. in general. But then other people have this theory that Beyonce is leaning into a, a Murica aesthetic so that she can capitalize on the upcoming nationalist uprising in this country and she'll be trendy. I think that that is some really, 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 <laughs> really far-fetched storytelling. I, I don't said, see that happening Beyonce at all. goes full Murica and all of a sudden everyone turns into a patriot. How easily influenced are you from celebrity prowess? It's simple. Beyonce's camp is anticipating a pro-America movement because the political narrative is shifting, thus capitalizing on the potential future. I think that no, beyond that, that's wrong because Beyonce, neither Beyonce nor most um, people that are in the media and in, in the music industry, they're not that forward thinking. They would not, she would not put herself in a position that's dangerous like that, which because if you're wrong about whether the this the Amer pro America thing is coming, if she's wrong, she ruins her career for half a decade. So she, you don't, you, it's right. it's way better for them to wait and be slow and respond because it's safe. If you try to lead on that kind of stuff and you're wrong, you're doomed. So that person's just crazy. Yeah, I agree. It's a little bit far fetched. It's also depressing that the idea of being pro America in your own country has to be like a gamble of a move as depressing as it is. Yes. That has to be some kind of yeah. underhanded ploy, yeah. right? But thanks, Obama. I mean, the overall vibe coming from Beyonce right now is that she is stooping so low as to validate country music as a real genre. Like she's, it's, she will deign just, to just even. A month ago, they, they don't saying, realize that country music is actually bigger than hip hop and R and B. Yes, like those shows do way more people. These, pe these, these, the people that are complaining and stuff, they are completely and totally inside a bubble. Good. Plus, they yeah. were just saying a month ago that um, Black Americans invented country music, anyways. So, yeah. which is it? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Is country music full well, of white supremacy of, or was it invented by black people? The point of saying that white people didn't invent anything is so that they can never be accused of cultural appropriation the other way. Yeah. They're reclaiming it. <laughs> right. Well, because that, those are the weirdos who believe that cultural appropriation is a thing and just don't understand that in an actual polite society where you learn to get along with people that don't look like you, you will embrace other aspects of other cultures and learn to love them. Yeah. Cultural, cultural appropriation is not actually bad. Cultural integration is actually what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. One of Beyonce's fans posted her cover art where she's holding the flag. Yeah. Um, and they said, one thing we've learned from this discourse surrounding Beyonce's new cover art is that most of y'all have no idea what black American culture is. You read our history in a book, but lack the understandings of the nuances of who we are. This is black American culture. What? I guess that just because Beyonce has adopted a certain aesthetic, that means that it's black culture and she's the authority on that. So. Again, she's, she's reclaiming country music. It's from, also disingenuous to pretend like Americans are learning about other parts of culture from books these days because that's not happening either. Actually, yeah. <laughs> that's just, American, a lot of Americans aren't learning anything. Just no. No. No, no. You're learning about it on TikTok. So. And you're learning about it on social media. They're not reading it in books. Yeah, in two minute increments. It is not the, uh, it is not the, um, the patriarchal white Western society <laughs> feeding you literature to shape your narrative, the narrative view of another culture. It's watching stuff on TikTok and on Instagram and reading what people say on Twitter because there are different, you know, different subsects of Twitter for different communities. That's how people are learning about different groups now. And if you feel that your, per, per, like your specific group is being misrepresented in those groups, that's not really possible because what is happening is the, the most popular stuff is pushed to the forefront. And the problem is you're not always gonna like, and this goes for all of us, you're not always gonna like the stuff that's pushed to the forefront that supposedly represents you mm. right well beyonce as a country artist it's a no from me dog 
Look, I, I, that that song is, yep. is like... Uh, At least do it well. Yeah. If you're going to infiltrate country music, do it well. Again, Darius Rucker has been doing it for a long time. Charlie mm-hmm. Pride, long time. Like, this is not anything new. And it's sad because I think the most egregious part of what you mentioned was the part about... Uh, we imagine the day where the the color or the sex of the person won't matter. I'm like you're the ones who constantly have to say the first, the fifth, the ninth artist to win this award on this day at the Lunar Equinox. Like they like they make up firsts for everything because they are obsessed with race and gender. And that's not going to change, no. at least not anytime soon. Let's finish these super chats. Dave Collins said, "I'm looking forward to the new All That Remains music, Phil." Couple we weeks. Are almost at a third crisis party. Just thought I'd mention that there. Do with that information what you will. Boosted Yogi said, Stop being dumb. Stop being lazy. Stop taking weight loss drugs. Take Tren instead and get jacked. <laughs> <laughs> Tren hard, buddy. Tren hard. Terrence Rice said, I built my wife a gaming PC, and what's the first thing she plays? Sims 4 and the 1998 Roller Coaster Tycoon. <laughs> yes! She says she feels 1998. attacked. 1998. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good for her. I did see like this New York Post article the other day that said, uh, um, guys who play computer games uh, suffer from a- erectile dysfunction more than other guys. And the, the comments were gold. <laughs> Is that actually true? No, it, it was like a survey done in China. <laughs> Wait, they're not even allowed to play video games in China. Exactly. Hold okay. on a second. Uh, there's a there's a lifting bro in the uh, in the chat named Deer Screen. <laughs> that makes sense. Eat, eat Glenn, Trent, Hard, Anavar, give up. <laughs> there's Heck three tech. different Anavar, three different uh, drugs in that sentence. Trent and Anavar are definitely. Right. Trent, yeah. uh, eat Glenn yeah. instead of clean. Yeah. Glenn, Glenn Buterol is the, is what they're talking about. Hectac said PCC content is always on point. Yes. Thank you. Well, yes, it is. And you're right. You're, you couldn't be more right, my friend. It's true. Uh, Corey Anderson, I'm not reading that. Alec Baird said, August Burns Red did a great job of giving us a full album experience with Death Below. Shout out Jason Richardson for his feature on that album. You ain't even ready for the stuff Jason Richardson did on our record. Oh, God. You ain't even ready. It's so good. Shane H. Wilder said, Phil, if you think Dylan's voice was bad, you should hear it now that he's old and his vocal cords are shot. It's uh, like Tom Waits gargled broken glass. Yuck. Uh, I was never a Dylan fan anyways. I like Tom Waits, Dylan not so much. Uh, here's the uh, that article. Um, playing computer games can increase risk of erectile dysfunction. Study Wait, why does it say computer games? So yesterday we believed the science. PC yes- Master Race, that's why. Yesterday, <laughs> me and Mary decided to believe the science because it said woke people are way more miserable than regular people. Uh, now I don't believe the science because it's saying that uh, video games cause erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Too much screen time is uh, literally making men soft. Chinese scientists, well, like, you can't trust a word they say. They're communists. Are you kidding me? Uh, find that playing video Funded games by the for a prolonged period can drastically increase someone's likelihood of experiencing erectile dysfunction, per a study published in Andrology. Uh, in the journal Andrology. The present study offered a substantial evidence for a positive ca- causal association between computer use and the risk of erectile dysfunction. Boys, get off the computer now. You're not going to be able to get hard. <laughs> Warning. Warning. Uh, okay. Corey Anderson, not going to read that. Sweet Baby Inc. said... Wait, why is Sweet Baby Inc. in our chat? (laughs) Okay, I don't know if I want to read this one either. What does it say? You can read it if you want to read it. I'm I'm trying to find it here. Uh, I'm down here. We're we're pretty far back, but... um, Uh, Corey Anderson... Keep going. Keep going. Oh, Corey Anderson liked if I liked the band ICP. No, I I don't listen to ICP. Oh, I was talking about the other one. No. Um... Uh, <laughs> it's just uh, is there an answer to this or is it just uh, I didn't even read it uh, Mary when you get a massage do you have a lady masseuse or a gentleman I ask because it's kind of intimate I'm curious about how you see the sitch neither neither yeah I don't. neither or neither that's the real question is it neither or neither personally I go with neither I say neither I don't know what about sweet baby ink uh yeah, there we go. Sweet Baby Ink, my 
Montreal, I'm assuming that's what the MTL stands oh. for. Uh, watching porn is the same as being a cuck sitting in the corner with, uh, with Bluey. Change my mind. We don't need to change your mind. We agree. MF Damien. This could be Elizabeth Hurley's son, for all we know. <laughs> MF Damien said, older era Opeth was my fave band that blended styles. It blew my mind that those voices came out of the same dude. 10 out of 10. Michael is great. Michael is great. The whole band is great. We toured with the Opeth back in like 2005, and they had uh, um, Gene Hogan was playing drums for him. What a great show. Music great is show. one of those things where I'd like the chance. Like, if we were going to talk about music, I'd want to be able to, like, specifically know what the topics were that day because so much of it's like I go home and then a song comes on and I'm like oh I wish I would have mentioned because there's so many like groups that I listened to growing up that I just don't think of in the moment if and, there's ever a day that or if there's like if you ever like oh let's listen to some songs and talk about music like it'd be cool to have stuff like have us all like check out the stuff yeah. beforehand especially if it's stuff you're not familiar with because I know that people are like oh blah 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 and I'm not familiar with 90% of the music people bring up but anyhow Shane H. Wilder said, I'm picking up what you're putting down, Phil. I'm looking up music through the decades, and it seems like the creativity has been lost. Listening to a lot of Lana Del Rey, Procol, Harem, Harem, and Mudvayne. Yeah. Mud oh, Mudvayne, huh? Yeah. High Vulture 75 said, instead of just space, Elon should do him one better and send Don to the moon and leave him there. Well, send him to the sun. Dude. <laughs> Don Lemon reporting to you from the moon <laughs> and then it becomes like the movie the martian he has to, he has to science the shit out of this except he doesn't make it home Corey anderson said my boy barley is the best boy he is he's a good boy <laughs> just because i'm free said elliot needs to man up and stop the waterworks i need yes, to stop the waterworks the on my left Page eye is a man now and men are not supposed to complain or cry that's right like you're devalued in society if you do that that's okay right. everyone still treats elliot page like a woman absolutely because so everybody matter. knows that elliot page is a woman right um gordon shumway said elliot page's voice sounds terrible i wouldn't be surprised if they sound like patty and selma or mike myers coffee talk character when they're 50. Yeah. <sighs> uh, did we do that saint miles one or did we miss that one Maybe oh, that one. Twenty dollar dude needs to increase his shock treatment. Sorry, you missed that. Sorry about that, Saint Miles. Shane H. Wilder said Paige is looking rough, like Iggy Pop rough. <laughs> uh, um, Pat the Plumber said saw a guy in Dunks yesterday rocking a camo All That Remains hat. Sick. Um, bonk bonk ninety two said Paige really kind of ruined Umbrella Academy for me. I wonder if that was a pretty common sentiment. Like, I, I don't know what the ratings were between well, the seasons. Even if it did ruin the show for you, you're not allowed to say it yep. out loud, at least not on social media or everyone's going to attack you. Shane H. Wilder said, Phil will bury the hatchet. The question is where? <laughs> <laughs> Yurishima Otaru said, Beyonce is doing a Chris Gaines. I don't know who that is. That is uh, Garth Brooks's. Uh, alter ego when he started doing hot rock he went really he went, he went and started do, he did a rock hmm. record okay. and it was it, you know it was fairly country t like flavored but it was still more of a rock record and and his name was chris gaines he put on a wig and had hair and everything okay yeah, so. hmm. like i like i like um noel gallagher's independent like like his like he did some electronic stuff that i actually really liked that okay. was very different from oasis you know nothing wrong with that Hmm? He has a song on the soundtrack for the first X Files movie that's fantastic. Yeah. Mm. It's the instrumental as the movie ends. Shane H. Wilder said, Sorry, Beyonce, the Pointer Sisters did it first. <laughs> yeah, they did. The Manic Mustache said, Charlie Pride was a black country singer in the 70s, never depicted on album art, and didn't play live until the 80s. Queen Bee needs to slow her roll. But she's a woman, so it's different. That's what she's <laughs> saying. It's because she's a woman. It's very difficult to be a woman in 21st century America, especially a rich woman with a billionaire husband. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the struggles of being married to a billionaire? Well, she was groomed, you know. That is true. Jay-Z groomed did you, her. Did you see that um, Mackenzie Bezos is just on a tear giving away all her money? It I'm, drives me nuts. I'm starting to think that I need to start myself a nonprofit. <laughs> you should become her sugar baby. I, I, need, I need a nonprofit called like Help People in Need. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the name of the group. The, so Help Podcasters I put in a, Need. Uh, I put up a thing about wh who she was donating to. Yeah. The largest group that she is donating to is all social justice stuff. Like yep. she's given 
no surprise millions there. and millions and millions and millions of dollars to organizations that are literally telling people be more racist because it's all CRT based bullshit. Well, I'm going to, I can start a group called Be More Racist. Like, will I get some of that sweet, sweet Bezos money? Probably not. It's too bad. I would love to see you try that. Corey Anderson said, former is a reference to that guy on Twitter when you said defend yourself in <laughs> response to a video. Yeah. LOL, Jer Bear is a commie loser. <laughs> yes, he was. What? Some guy on the... So I, I put up a tweet that was... There was like a bunch of people fighting. And I was just like, defend yourself. If someone comes at you, defend yourself. And that's oh, all I, I said. That, was defend, yeah. All I said was defend yourself. And he just <laughs> manufactured a whole scenario and talked about Kyle Rittenhouse and blah, 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 blah. And it was a big hullabaloo. And I'm like, man, you should write movies because that's a whole lot of imagination. <laughs> is that why Kyle Rittenhouse was trending today? I, I don't no, think it was him, did, but uh, it, it is he, good. He got like, uh, he did some like college uh, yeah. appearance. Well, that now. was, the, that was yeah. the, the thing that, that I was talking about. He went, Kyle Rittenhouse went to a, a college thing and like people were a actually attacking and they had okay. boogie and I'm like, you should defend yourself. People are attacking you. And then because I said defend yourself, then I'm advocating murder. Uh, is what he wanted see. people to believe. Jake Martin said, you guys got to understand, Beyonce is a victim of systemic racism, just like all non-white people, right. excluding Asians and sometimes Hebrews. That's so why courageous. Has, that's why she has so much money in the bank, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all that victimhood. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to live in America yeah. in like a $320 million home that looks like a community it's college. It's super, yeah. <laughs> Like she literally, she literally made like got to the point where she was at least worth half of a billion dollars <laughs> before like all YMCA. the social justice stuff came out. At it all. literally looks like a YMCA building. Her, her it's like all glass. It's so weird. Looks, real. looks suspiciously easy to clean up a murder in there. She, she's like, she's like, look, my husband started title. Do you know how hard it was to to get him over his uh, his pain of starting a company that failed as badly as title did. Just because I'm free, said Crisis Party. Thank you. Thank you. Shane H. Wilder said, damn it, Corey, now we have to reset the I'm not reading that counter twice <laughs> in one show. That happens. I, I like that there's, there should actually be some kind of physical <laughs> I'm not reading that counter. Greg Duvier said, Phil's, Phil, this is the wrong studio. Get back to the recording studio until I get my new music. Listen, I tell you what, it is actually being worked on presently right now. I know that our uh, our... Our uh, producer is mixing right now, and I will get the first pass through sometime today of our first single. And once that gets approved, then it goes off to the uh, people that have to go ahead and make sure that it gets all over the internet and blah, blah, blah. So it's this coming nice soon. That's funny. Hi, Vulture 75 said, good to have you back, Phil. What's your opinion on eating cereal with milk? Is it a meal just for children or is it appropriate for adults as well? It's a literal <laughs> treat for adults. Are you kidding me? It's delicious. Cinnamon Toast Crunch and a glass, you know, in a, in a bowl. I, I can eat a whole box, man. What are you talking about? Okay. Yesterday. This is a thing because Mary... Oh, I missed it. Oh, did, did I somehow step on Mary, something that... Mary is not a fan. She thinks it's immature for adults to eat cereal <laughs> with milk. Okay, here's the thing, though. I've been on... A, I've been on, like, even more than you... Imma You're ready to go to war. Immature <laughs> thinks that... <laughs> She's right. Okay. I'm very mature. Yeah, and she drinks from right. her adult sippy cup. Like... <laughs> okay, yesterday, I found... <laughs> Fruity pebbles with marshmallows, and I can literally feel the years coming off my life as I consume the sugar. That's disgusting. It's incredible. It's absolutely <laughs> incredible. I think I ate like a whole box yesterday. I'm telling you, cinnamon toast crunch. Look, I'm not saying the cereals aren't good, but like grow up. Also, um, uh, hold on, excuse me. Yep. No. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> also, just breakfast in general. I feel like I'm anti-breakfast. No. You know what it is? It's giving those uh, those things where it's like a woman says something insane and a guy has to write it off on a list of icks, like the <laughs> long list. It's like breathing. <laughs> I'm not will, saying it's women, an ick. I'm just saying I'm I'm anti-breakfast. Women will post shit like that, isn't this, and then wonder what? why They're every society in all of human history have had strict controls on their sovereignty <sighs> for as long as there have been people. Mary is going to have kids one day, and, her, and she's going to have a Son and he's gonna put some cereal into a bowl no, look, and I'm, some milk and she's like you're like you've got till exactly the day you turn 18 look, and then none of this kids are growing they need breakfast once you're an adult you don't need breakfast that's wrong 
I'm just telling the facts. <laughs> here. You don't need breakfast. I'm anti-breakfast. Broad definition of facts, right there. Okay, Ben Shapiro would not approve on that one. I don't. I don't think he would. Uh, look, for, for facts don't care about your fruity pre- pebbles <laughs> and your frosted flakes. Facts, facts don't, don't care, care about, about your frosted, frosted flakes. flakes. Yes, they Perfect. do. They absolutely Perfect. do. Uh, one more here from Corey Anderson says, "I'm on a quest to get married to say something that is debaucherous but doesn't sound like it." No, thanks. That sounds like something Dan Schneider would do. You want me to just not read your super chats? Yeah. Then that's the perfect thing to say. Yeah. Tacti Flatty said being anti-breakfast is commie. Is that true? Uh, well, you know, well, no food not eating around. food is very similar to communist behavior. <laughs> But it also makes you skinny. <laughs> <laughs> That's very communist too. Well, modern communist. Look, no, PCC but... is just CCP backwards. <laughs> they keep saying this. So, so it's just no breakfast food at all. I like breakfast food, but if you eat breakfast like during the morning, it's just that's not right. There's something wrong with that. I've uh, like okay. So when I when we first started doing the show, I wouldn't eat. I didn't eat breakfast a lot. I wouldn't eat till like right before the show or lunch. Now I I enjoy getting to eat before I come in because it's like uh, I'm not as like okay for instance when we would get to when we do the show guys like right when we're getting done we've picked all the topics and everything uh, what is it usually like eleven it's like twelve twelve thirty whatever yeah. and we're about to do the thumbnails if I haven't eaten that day and I know we're about to go do the thumbnails I literally want to die you turn into a nightmare you start throwing things I at do. me I do I'm like you what start do you throwing want in the furniture and I throw books at her yeah. Yeah. The biggest this is reason, why I'm crying right now. The biggest reason to have a meal before you go to work or have a meal in the in the morning is so that way you're not an asshole to everybody. Exactly. Because hungry people are like, man, I'm going to ruin your day. Yeah. Angry. I, I think I've trained myself out of it unless you disagree and you think that I am an a-hole. No, you're not an a-hole. Well, that's how I am. I, I don't eat until nighttime. Well, at least she's not. I'll give. There's one upside to this. Well, now you I'm curious what you the... like if you eat in the morning. What? I said. Well, now I'm curious what you'd be like if you ate in the morning. I've tried it and I don't like it. Okay. Uh, there is an upside to this. She doesn't talk about the benefits of fasting 24/7, which would drive me. I mean, oh yeah, that's stupid. If I do it solely because I'm lazy and I don't like eating breakfast or yeah. Do you it's like, like wasting time? I guess. Yeah. I guess is. Definitely not. In I'm like I'm like the least picky eater, but I'm so neutral about not food, food because it's just it's I don't, just fuel. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Totally Our, get it. We got a couple more there. Uh, okay, Carnell said, "Mary, grow up." Reaches for Dino Doggy. <laughs> that didn't happen. There's nothing wrong with Dino. You're Dino. lying. Laveria said they hated Mary because she told the truth about breakfast. Absolutely true. Wrong. Shane H. Wilder said, "Well, you're failing at it, Corey." True. That stands atastic. Said Phil, have you ever worked with Joey Sturgis? Also, PCC, who is the guest tomorrow, or is it a surprise? No, I've not. No. I guess the only no. info you get on that until tomorrow is that we've had the guest before. So you don't want to tell <laughs> It's not a surprise. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I want to keep them on their toes. Okay. You'll have to wait till two fifteen when the waiting room goes up. Yeah. And you will see. All right. All right, uh, guys, before we go, hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel, please, if you have not done so already. Also, make sure you eat your breakfast tomorrow. I think it's a good idea. Phil, let everybody know. Where they're I, am, I am Phil That Remains on Twix. I'm Phil That Remains Official on Instagram. The band is All That Remains. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, Amazon Music, YouTube, you know, the internet. And don't forget, the left lane is for crying. Yes, it is. Andrina goes, there's a waiting room. The waiting room is what you call it when the when the stream is up, but it's not live yet. We educate people. Uh, Corey Anderson said, I was wrong to ask the massage question. I forgot Mary is a never nude. Ah, that was addressed the other day. Yeah. 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 There are dozens of us. <laughs> dozens. A never nude. So you, you wear wear a bath, a bath bathing <laughs> suit into the bath. Like, and you're, exactly. It's a literal bathing suit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Guys, you can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X that is also Mary Archived. 
Yes, guys. If you'd like to follow me, Instagram and Twix, at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. PCC is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Noon Pacific, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. If you would prefer to listen rather than watch, if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show, Facebook and not TikTok because we were banned at PopCultureCrisis, and on Instagram at PopCultureCrisisPod. Guys, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. Make sure you eat your breakfast. See you then. Bye. Bye.